Welcome, Be Still a Crew. I'm David Weirich. This is... Hey, what's up, everybody? I'm Alex Ostoich, and we have a guest today. His name is... Caleb McDougall. Caleb McDougall. So what do you do, Caleb? I have a flooring company located in town in Oklahoma, the parts of Oklahoma. Okay. And why did you choose to go business route instead of getting a job? I don't know. I'm being told what to do. Yeah, you hear that Simple all the time. That. I don't like being told. Well, and I mean, whoever I'm doing the job for at the time is my employer. Okay. That's kind of how I feel. But at the same time, like, you know, you hear so many people, like, I see on Facebook all the time, hey, what do you guys do for a living that you have time off? Or what do you guys do for a living? Blah, blah, blah. I do this job. And some people, you know, they say, I don't like getting told what to do, but. You're getting told what to do regardless. It's just something that we like to say makes us feel better about having our we own business. We employers. And we definitely have to deal with complaints all the time. Either. Who we're doing the job for, or the companies that we're doing the job so for. So why flooring? Well, I, that's what I grew up doing, and I was going to go be orthodontist. The Indians were going to pay for all my schooling, and I pay like up to eighty grand for my schooling to be orthodontist. So you had a free, you had an opportunity to have a free ride yeah. to go be in that role. Mm-hmm. Well, I mean, you guess you could have been self-employed I did, as an I did one, I did one year, uh, just do my my pre my prereqs and stuff over at Indiana, and I, I couldn't stand it. Man. I just I just felt like I was underpaid. I didn't like the environment. I didn't like where my life was going. I didn't feel like I had any freedom. And to be honest with you, I showered a couple times in the dentist office, and I just couldn't care. Like, I always wanted to do it growing up. It's something I always talked about with my, my mom and my dad. It's like, that's what I'm going to do. That's what I'm going to do. Military, I, I raced dirt. I didn't say race. I rode dirt bikes when I was a kid growing up, and I tore my body up because I just didn't have the right training. We just, my dad said, here's a dirt bike, son, go do it. And I did, and I always get or uh, trying to go out there and be like everybody else that had put the time in the training. Like, we'd go work, and then I'd just go ride on the weekends like a weekend warrior. I'd go ride, get hurt, but it didn't really work out for me. So, I mean, so how has been in the military when he sent me? Uh, I actually applied for the Marines, and I had too many medical. They were wanting to want me to set at a desk, and I'm like, well, you know, I'm not saying Not everybody desk. can be a Marine, I'm just saying. No, that, no, and, and, and I didn't want to, I didn't want to go. You know, for the right away. reasons at that time in my life anyways, I wanted to go just to get away. And that's not just easy to refuse. Yeah. That's, 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 that's why I went. That's the reason that most people, yeah, probably 85 or so. It's a blessing that I didn't get accepted because they, I probably, whatever I just try to get on, out of their house. I'm 100%. So I would yeah. stay with it. And I'd probably still be in good. I mean, when I focus on something, like we were just talking before the podcast, like when I'm in a channel and doing stuff, that's all I want to do. So it's really hard to do anything on the outside of that because I can't. You got to have family time too. That's a big deal I'm going through right yeah, now. Yeah, family time is, man, mm-hmm. family time. Like I, I was telling, I tell David all the time, my daughter was four when I was gone two and a half years out of her life. Yeah. Two and a half out of her life. You can't come back. No, you can't. Now my little baby's growing up. She's 18 months. And I'm like, oh my God, she's so cute. She's going to do this. My wife's like, yeah, I used to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Milan used to do that. Where was I? Well, you know, that's Somewhere why else. I didn't go in the Air Force. It's because I was supposed to leave September 9th of 2009 my daughter was born September 3rd and that's the exact thought process I had was yeah. I'm about to miss two years of this girl's life more than that yeah. but probably but in that that's time, what they tell you and then you get out there and you might be stationed for so, an extra uh, year oh, and, yeah, I, and I regret it to be honest with you there's times I regret it I wish that I would have gone to, into the Air Force like but there are times where I'm like man I, it's not too yeah because you're a tough employee oh bro so, I'd have to lose like on a daily Oh God! I'd have to lose like hold on, well, twenty four. I'd have to lose twenty four pounds, and that's a hard for a guy. You wouldn't have to use PT. Well, yeah, perspective, there you go. right? There you go. That's, perspective. That you that's what I'm talking okay, about. Okay, perspective. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, I mean, right now I'm about twenty pounds overweight, and I feel like a slug at work. My Garrett, my employer, or my employee, has to work with me every day. That's all I do here. Because when you're in great shape, mm-hmm. and we've been in great shape. Anything less than that, you know what you're capable of. Yeah, man, you feel like I mean, you feel like well, you know, shit. Soccer, you're walking around like you get down. You, oh, soccer, you soccer, soccer that drive. It takes mm-hmm. your drive away when you strong mind, strong body. You can do whatever. When That's you start, it. when you when you slack off in one area of your life, you feel like you're just hard on yourself. So then it reflects to everyone around you. You start being negative. Well, everybody, everyone around you. It's the it. energy. Mm-hmm. You know, Socrates said though, it's a shame that men go through life and don't know the full extent of what their body is capable of yeah Yeah, that's that's paraphrased that's not but something around that effect like Mm -hmm. it's a shame that that men don't allow themselves to 
be in peak physical condition. Well, it's your own fault too. Yeah, I got right. friends that are they're they're in it's great not my shape, fault, man. Caleb. Like, it's everyone else's but they, fault. And they are self employed as well. Yeah. So you could you can make excuses for yourself, man. I, I get like the highest work one being in. I, I spend more time with my family than you do. Well, you're gonna and you make might, it, you're you gonna might, make it a priority, man. And you might, you know, and I, and I might be right in that extent. Like I do, probably spend you know more time at the house with my kids and stuff. Like I could, I could probably steal an hour or two extra evening and go do it. So it's your choice. And I just haven't made wrong choices the last couple of years with like my my personal like. And I hear lately I've been getting back in the routine of things, and I'm I'm feeling better. I'm moving better. I'm nicer to people on the phone. I just you, when you feel good, you're you have a way to stress to exert your stress. Yeah, you know what I mean. Because yeah. like we bottle it in. Like most mm, yeah. most entrepreneurs, like most of us, just bottle it in until we get enough money that it does, we don't have to bottle it in anyway. Yeah, you know what I mean. But we bottle it in. Well, because in this because we have to just suck it up mm-hmm. and say, okay, I can't pout over what happened yesterday. I can't make an excuse for why this didn't work the way it was supposed to work. Like. Now I've got to focus on how I'm going to make the rest of my life work. It doesn't do any, in my mind, it doesn't do any good for me to like call you and be like, hey, bro, I'm out of money. Or, hey, bro, I'm having a bad day. Or, because I know what you're going to tell me. Yeah. Suck it up, bro. Yeah. <laughs> dude, well, I mean, told us. I mean yeah. we live in a rural area right here. I mean, the way we were raised, we're not, we're not really allowed. I mean, you're allowed. You're not really accustomed to way. going home and like, babe. Today's rough, you know. My yeah. materials didn't show up, and I thought I was gonna make this much on a job, and I only made this much. So now we're we're behind for a couple weeks till I get this other job done. No one cares. You're supposed to be, hey, we're doing good, babe. Go get that thing. Go buy that. Not that materialistic things are important and having a happy, you know, marriage and lifestyle, but yeah, no, it is important. Women, women, no, yeah. If you, I don't care what they say, man. No, women need a masculine figure. To sp- provide for them if they want a job that's great i'm not saying women shouldn't work but it's a man's job to go out there provide and not be a pussy when you come home and whine about your day women they 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 they, they don't care they act like they do you exactly. start whining at the house they instantly lose attraction for you you can see it in their eyes they just yeah. come home crying oh, what, what the hell did I my marry knee you? hurts <laughs> my back hurts they don't care what the hell did i marry uh-huh. right? yeah mm-hmm. yeah because when they met you you were in great shape yeah you were out there in the field Snatching up every pussy you could get, it. Just, <laughs> and you was, and that's attractive to women. Being a, a man like that no, is attractive to women. You get that, and then you you get fat, you start whining. Yeah. Like, who is this guy? Yeah, that's you know? that's a new thing, man. Like I see, I, I walk around, man, and I pay attention to people. You know how many people that they get a stomach like men? Yeah. Well, just just we talk about crazy, that, man. There's no way you can be happy with yourself. All the Unless time. you have a medical just, condition. Yeah. Well, see, we we it's talk about that with you know we do the financial services, financial planning. You know, one of the biggest issues that we run into is that people are overweight and they don't even qualify, they don't qualify to yeah. do to do things because it's a health risk. Yeah. It's a health risk to be fat. Like, I don't care what they say as far as like body shaming and stuff like that. Like, <clears throat> if you're fat, do something about it. Like, don't complain and be like, oh, my clothes don't fit or blah, blah, blah. I've been there. Mm-hmm. Dude, I weighed 240 last November. Yeah. I'm 5'8". Yeah. 240. Yeah. This guy met me and I was like, you better shape up. Yeah, right? it's not him, but it was more <laughs> than my pants didn't fit. Dude, I'm but, you. you know, like, it's it, it's a real thing. But, like, dude, we walk through, like, Walmart, people wearing pajama pants. I mean, they're wearing pajama pants. You know, like, it's funny if you watch, like, an old, like, Andy Griffith show. Dude, they put on suits to eat dinner with their family yeah, in their the house. Show. Nowadays, it's like, hey, let's go to, let's go to Walmart. Like, nobody combs their hair. They're wearing house shoes and wearing, you know, nobody cares about the way that, not to be materialistic, but the way they look. No, appearance. Like, it's about appearance. It's appearance, not about... Yeah. 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 It's funny you guys said that. Me and my wife just had this conversation the other night in the car. I was like, yeah, we love each other. I said, but we don't want to get in routines where we're roommates. I said, the law of attraction is real. I mean, you can love me. You can love my person. I said, but I still want to... I, I can't look you in the eyes and tell you I love you if I don't try to keep myself attractive for you. Like, if you marry me... And I, I mean, I weighed 175 pounds, was... Riding my road bike everywhere. I mean, going to the gym. Of course, I had more free time. We didn't have kids, and you know, yeah. and I'd have to take time away to make sure I was at home for dinner. I mean, I, I get that, but at least putting out the effort to where I can still look at her and she knows that I still care because I'm representing it through, through my appearance, trying to dress decent when going to town, brushing my damn teeth, 
Start stinking. You know what I mean? People get in a relationship, they set themselves go, and then they wonder why their wives start looking out. Or, yeah, you know, yeah, like, no, listen, true. that girl could probably still love you, but you wouldn't want to lay down with somebody who's got body odor or their teeth are all jacked up. I mean, you have to stay attractive for your spouse. There's certain things you can yeah. help. But there's, there's love. Certain, there's always going to be love there, but there, the law of attraction, dude. I mean, we're well, still yeah, mammals. Yeah, yeah. We're still mammals. We still want to be yeah. attracted to each other. No, no, it's I mean, you know what I'm talking about. You lay down with, with, with the Grinch. <laughs> you know what I mean? They're, they've been griping at your ass all week, and then they're ugly and fat because they let themselves go. It's hard to be like, I still love you, babe. No, you don't. You're lying to them because you know they don't care enough about you to keep themselves in check, too. Like, my wife's like you, too. She still tries to eat right and do stuff. That, that Even if she never looks the way she, she did before, which I still think she's beautiful, I know she's trying. To me, that's attractive. Because she's letting me know through her effort that, hey, I still care. Well, no excuses. When no you excuses. see somebody that doesn't care, it. it's like, you well, know, my wife always on the house. Personality is everything, house. though. I mean, that's attractive. She cares yeah. my hard work to get provide for her a nice place to live. But her, just little stuff, doing laundry, doing the dishes, she works, too. So her doing all that extra stuff, I notice that. Like, she still does yeah, care. She appreciates what I've done, which makes me, in return, want to do more for her. You get home, you, and I don't, and I, I don't, I try to keep this, you know, because we're local, the podcast local. But, you know, I was married before. You come home and, you know, the house is destroyed. You've worked 12, 14 hours. You come home and the dishes are piled up and yeah. you, you don't have any work clothes for the next day. you got to go in there and do all that stuff to work. Well, I mean, the last thing I want to do is go sit down and eat dinner with you and have a, hey, how was your day today? I don't want to talk. We don't want to visit. It's always Instagram. <laughs> yeah. Because yeah. I'm just the dishes. Yeah, you, don't, you don't even want to be in that situation, man. It's just, yeah. So when you, I mean, you got to work on yourself. Well, an attitude, too. Don't, don't forget yeah. attitude. Yeah. Like, you know, and I, and I love my, man, my wife tries to get us to eat healthy. Mm-hmm. Like, I know she cares because she tries to make us eat healthy. Mm-hmm. She's changed, like, mine and my daughter's it's the effort. diets. That's what I'm getting at. It's right? the effort. You know? gonna be and so she's it's like, hey, effort. we're going to eat healthier. We're going to make sure that our kids don't have diabetes. You know, we're going to, she puts forth the effort to make sure that she makes us healthy meals. Yeah. And I know she loves me. I might not like it all the time. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? Because she cut ramen noodles out of our diet. Yeah. Ramen noodles are bomb, dude. For yeah. 45 cents, you can have a whole meal. Yeah, right. She's yeah. like, she I'm says. Freaking cancer. <laughs> well, exactly. Right? We're getting and so that I know, uh, right, and so putting that out of I know that she right? cares. Yeah. I know that she cares for that. But another dude. thing is, another thing is personality, though. Like, even if your wife or your significant other is super attractive, but their attitude is crap, mm-hmm. like, that's unattractive as I'll get out. When mm-hmm. you have to come home, like you said, nagging people, like, man, like, that's the worst. Especially when you work 12, 14 hours. Like, I've, I've worked with guys that all they do is complain about their wife yeah. the whole time you're working with them. That's Marine Corps, dude, right there. <laughs> Every Marine and I love, and I love my wife, dude. My, <laughs> wife, my wife has been super supportive, mm-hmm. and she's trying to change things. Like I said, we don't always agree on it. But we, we compromise and we make it through. And, you know, my wife's still super attractive. So. Yeah, so I don't understand why, why a lot of guys would do that. I've had guys that work for me do that, always griping about their home life. Even if it's not that bad and they're trying to sound cool, they yeah. come to work just to have something just to talk bitch. about. Yeah, yeah just and, a bitch. Uh, well, if you don't like it, change it. So then you get it in your mind that that's reality. Your mm-hmm. lie becomes a reality. So you go home it's what and something that didn't bother it's you, what you tell now yourself. bothers 100%. you because you've lied to yourself all day yeah. to fit in with this group. So now you go home and you're unhappy for no reason. Yeah, and you're yeah. self projecting. Well, your, your words have crap words have power. Dude. Words have power. One hundred percent. Words have power. Yeah. If so, if you try to, if you want to think positive, say positive things. Yep. Whenever you start hearing those negative thoughts, say rebuke them with positive things. Yep. Because we all have something to be grateful for. Listen to Ed Milet the other day, and he was sitting there. And you know, Ed Milet's rich, and he's sitting there with another rich guy, and that guy says, "What do you have to be grateful for?" And he says, "Nothing. I don't have anything to be grateful for." And he said he looked over. Or he's at the uh, he's at the gym or he's at yeah. something. But somebody had cancer or something like that, and he was like, "Oh my God!" He said. So on the way home, I started thinking about all the things that I was grateful for. Like you have to learn to be grateful for what you have. Like right now, you know, my financial situation isn't the best, but you know, I have a house to live in, I have food, I have a car to drive. You know what I mean? And I'm coming out of it. It's not going to stay there. That's what this podcast is all about. It's about yeah. being better than what you are right now. That's what yeah. we're trying to do. It's like we all have issues. Every, yeah. All three of us have Everyone problems in our business bad. right now. We might have a personal problem, but we're pushing it through. We're getting through it, and that's the whole point. And, and this is a weird time right now. I mean, I, I'm only 30, so I, I wasn't, you know, during 2008, I was still young. So I wasn't paying attention like I do now. I have kids, and 
Yeah, well, that is money now. Yeah. Exactly. So the, the weird thing with going and some of the colleagues and stuff that do the same thing I do in this area, we're all in fear because of the, the unknown. It's not the market we have crashing, plenty, housing crashing. Well, you, and social media is such a big deal now. So every time you get on any social media outlet, it's, it's like negative. Yeah. Oh, it's going to crash. Oh, you need to invest here. Oh, you need to do this. So, you know, well, it's the, our mindset is, oh, whatever, oh, whatever. But then you start hearing it after year after year. Then you start like getting home, like, maybe I should try to do something different. Or maybe I should Bro, do this. If you, because if you control the people, how they think, Mm. That's where you can drive them, make them believe that that's what you know. It's like you're being funneled by What's ants. his name? Like Tate. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He, he, he talks sheep. about the matrix. Mm-hmm. He, he, said, he said two and two is four. Yeah. But if everybody agreed that two, two and five. two would yeah. be five. I, I listen to that. Yeah. You, now two and two is five. So that's what they're trying to do. So is the market crashing? Probably. Is the housing market crashing? Probably. Okay. But how do we all accept it? What they keep talking about. And you just keep hearing it over perception. and over and over. Perception, exactly. My own, my own mindset this year has been, can I change it? No. Can I do something about what's going on in our government? No, I have an opinion. But my level of you know status doesn't affect anything that goes on over there. All I can do is do the best of what I do and offer the best service I can do. And living stressed out and in fear like that, I mean, I mean, you gotta financially set yourself up, anyways. Yeah. You know, just like you know, with what you and David do, and what you guys are trying to get me to come into business, you guys and do the, do that on the side and stuff. You have to set yourself up outside of what you're doing right now, anyways. You shouldn't be just doing that because of things going on right now. You should be doing that anyways. But it, it's just a scary time right now. You don't know. Do I invest here? Do I put money here? Do I do I save it? Do I put it in a vault in the house and bury it? You know, everyone's living in this weird time where. No one really knows what's going on. We're not getting the right source of there's so much information from our government, yeah. from the news. You can't trust anything right now because everyone's been caught in so many, you know, lies and irregular. You know, everything is just made up right now. It's almost like you're living in this. What do you believe? The Matrix. What do you, <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, like Andrew said, yeah. don't take anything from Andrew. Uh, like it's like you don't know what's real or what's not real. I mean. One day they're saying this, the next day they're saying that, and people like you know, like me, that just go out and work hard every day, try to do someone an honest job. We don't know what to believe. We just we go home and you'll like I, I got this spot that I go to in uh, right outside of uh, it's called Shawnee Grocery. We always go there and uh, yeah, see me flipping in right there, piling my and my good shoes, <laughs> piling my good shoes. And, uh, we we go to Shawnee Grocery and all all the uh, old gentlemen are always there talking every morning. And I don't really talk too much because if you start talking, you're there for two hours. Yeah. But uh, I always listen when I'm in there getting my coffee in the morning or if I'm getting something to eat or something, something junk food. But they're always just like, yeah, this is going to be the worst year. Yep. Yeah. Like, yeah, well, you know, all, all, you're, all we're being fed right now is just BS. doom and gloom. And from every things. channel. From yeah, every channel. Every, every it doesn't matter what, mm-hmm. what really media source you turn right into. Now, so, you know, yeah. um, I don't even know why people listen to the news anymore. I, I start not. So, we don't, no, we don't even, I got rid of all of it, direct, dish, we don't have none of that. We stream like some kids show there once in yeah. a while, and we try to stay outside, man. Dude, even kids shows these days. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. God, you can't you watch know, my, anything my anymore without some sort so of propaganda. Noticed, check this it. out. So I noticed my kids, We, you know, sometimes I watch cartoons and stuff mm-hmm. like that. Like me and my wife, you know, we go work around the house. You know, I got stuff to do, right? She's busy. I'm busy, right? And the kids watch cartoons. They come back, and they whine more. It's like, ah. Oh. My son is like, I'm like, what the fuck are you whining for? Yeah. Like, you are a man. A man don't fucking whine. Yeah. You know, and my wife's like, take it easy on it. <laughs> yeah, I mean, they're, they don't they're take so it young. easy. It's like, well, no, but that's, but that's, that's how you're training them to whine. That's what they're trying to do. I've seen that with Peppa Pig. They had two moms. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Do whatever you want to do, but don't force it on kids. That's, you know what I'm saying? Like, I, I have a certain way I believe. If I come get a job for you or we're just friends, I'm not going to self reflect my beliefs on you because I think you're wrong. I mean, that's not what you do. You, you, if you ask me my opinion, I'll give it to you. But for me to say, hey, pull you to the side and say, hey, Alex, I, this is the way I believe you should probably do that too. Enforce my beliefs on yeah, you. Yeah. Like, like, like they <laughs> well, do. Well, they, like they do yeah, the opposite. Like their culture. This homosexual they do the culture opposite, though. It's forcing it. Listen, and it's not even this bad. might get taken down, but this is the way I think about it. You said we're open to have our own opinion on this no, podcast. Man, yeah. Here's the way I look at it. If you are so okay with your lifestyle, then why is it so important for everyone to accept you? Because you're living in guilt. 
when you live in guilt, the first thing you want to do is get everyone to accept it so you don't have to wake up every day feeling guilty. Yep. So you want the TV people to be okay with your lifestyle. You want the, all the churches to be okay with your lifestyle. You want all the conservative people to be okay with your lifestyle because you wake up every day feeling guilty because it's not a good lifestyle to live. And you know, to be honest, like with most of us, they want to force it on our kids you so they'll grow up and you they said can it a minute ago. with what they're doing. Yeah, and what they don't understand is a lot of us, we don't care. We don't. You live yeah, whatever don't. way you want to live. Leave our kids alone. But yeah. like, yeah, yeah, it's crazy. Live man. whatever way you want to live. Yeah. Do your thing. But you wouldn't want me coming in and telling what you're doing is wrong, even yeah. if I believe it. So don't come in and tell me what you're doing is right. Yeah. Like, we can be friends. Exactly. And you be whatever way you want. For sure. You can have different opinions human. and still be friends. You can yeah. have different yeah. opinions and still I've be friends. Talk, I've, I've had conversations like this so many people. But I don't have to believe what you're doing is right. They know I was raised very strict. And I don't. And if I believe, if I live the way that I was taught, me saying a cuss word to you is, is the way I was raised is wrong. So for me to judge what you're doing, I'm doing the same. There's no level of sin. There's a couple out there the way we grew up that were supposedly the worst out there to think it's blasphemy and sodomy. Other than that, a sin is a sin. So for me to judge you, then I'm becoming a Pharisee. I'm doing what God tried to get abolished. You know, the law of Moses, the people sitting up on their high horse judging people. I'm not going to do that, man. You're a human. I'm in just as much sin as you are. It's a different sin, but for me to go and say, "Hey, man, you're going to hell," it's like you're just as you're just as bad for sin. Well, that's that. why Jesus but said, "Don't force me to accept your sin," because I'm not going to force you to accept mine. Well, that's why you know Jesus said, like, worry, about the, me "Worry about the sawdust in your don't worry about the sawdust in your brother's eye. Worry yeah. about the beam in your own." Yeah. Man, we're just supposed to love each other. Exactly. Now, I'm supposed to confront you in your sin. Yeah, I have a lot of. I'm supposed to tell you, like, hey, listen, buddy, like, you're messing up. I love you, <laughs> yeah. but you're screwing up, yeah. and that's your choice. If you want to keep screwing but they, up, a lot of times they can tell by your demeanor. Yeah, you know, like exactly. they might say something that's not in the, you know, and they can tell by your demeanor. And you're supposed to be a light in the darkness. So, and I, I don't claim to be this great Christian because I'm not, man. I, I have a lot of filth going on up in here. A lot. We do construction. <laughs> we talk about dirty stuff all the time. We're just men. We just. Yeah. You know, we, that's how it's supposed to be. Exactly, though. it's supposed so, to. So be I don't right. try to give Bible studies to nobody right now. I'm in no position to be, you know, getting into religious battles with people. But just the concept of just having good morals has gone away. Yeah, it's completely abolished. Absolutely, it, and that's what's sickening to me. That's what makes me want to start going back to church and doing stuff like yeah. that. Because you know, I want to be living in sin. I, I got you comfortable, yourself, which is you wrong. Catch, you catch yourself mm -hmm. falling more and more yeah. into into the worldview, yeah. even though you don't want to. Without that guiding light, without that help of a moral yeah. compass, mm -hmm. which is good. Like, it, if the TV is affecting you, yeah. and you guys got rid of it, yeah. because it will, man. Like, if you turn on Netflix, if you turn on Hulu, if you watch a regular TV show, it's all about acceptance of maybe things you don't accept. Yeah. And you know what? That's their priority. That's their yeah. prerogative, whatever. I don't have to watch it. You know, that's my choice. I don't have to watch it. But don't put it out there on regular TV yeah. to make it where we're trying to, you're, you're desensitizing us. Mm -hmm. You're making us be tolerant. You don't want to know what's going to kill Christianity in America. It's going to be tolerance. Yep. It's going to be, you're so desensitized to sin that it's not a problem anymore. It becomes and you don't have to love, and listen, I'm not saying mm -hmm. that to hate people, because I don't hate anybody. Because I sin. Yeah. We're all have sinned and come short. We're all sinners. That's the problem. But we have to have that moral compass. We have to have that guiding light that says, hey, listen, what you're doing is wrong. You have a chance to fix it. But that's what they're doing right now. The moral compass for the new kids, the born kids that are being raised right now, is being changed. So what's happening is they're not going to know what the moral compass is. They're going to think that everything's okay. The moral compass is going That's what I'm saying. Now. They're desensitizing. They don't, they don't have to change mine and your thinking. Yeah, they don't have the next to. generation. All they have to do is raise our kids that way and just wait 20 years. Why don't you see all these kids dressing up like Jeffrey Dahmer at school because it's cool? Yeah, they, they, they just know. came out with this documentary of Jeffrey Dahmer. The, the guy Jeffrey that, Dahmer. He was, so he was, he was a gay a serial, man. He was a serial killer. He was killing eight he would, people. He would go to bars. He would seduce other gay men, drug them, take them back to his apartment, kill them, do them. ungodly things to their bodies, then put them in barrels of acid, melt them down. I mean, he was he did it to like I think leather clothing men, yeah, something like that. Yeah. So. But and it's they, a documentary but on, they Netflix, made it on yes. Netflix. And now all these kids on TikTok are dressing up like Jeffrey Dahmer and doing the stuff that they've seen on the deal. Like, it's cool. Like, they just made it cool. Oh, it's cool to be a gay serial killer? Are you kidding me? Yeah, they definitely. And, and there's no, like, when you get on Netflix, if my son was, was 
a little bit older. And he There's like, no oh. filter. Yeah. No, he could be like, oh, what's this? A guy in glasses. Oh, this must be a cool movie. He could just <laughs> click it and watch it. I would never know. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? There's uh-huh. no parental guidance on any of that. I don't get yeah. a notification. I mean, I guess there there is uh, things you can put on your TV well, to censor what they can watch and stuff. But then all kinds of stuff come up on YouTube Kids Channel. But that's like, what. And here's the thing. Here's the thing, thing, here's the thing is like that this is like. They could put all that stuff out there. Why did they right? even make it cool? But ultimately, they twisted it to make it attractive. Yeah, but instead of like a like a History Channel documentary because, where it's like, oh my god, now there's like music in it. It's cool. The guy is cool, and <laughs> that's what they're doing. Well, it's they're trying to promotion. Man. Yeah, they're promoting. Yeah. It. Like you said, they're just trying to, the next generation. Yeah. That's it. You know, because wait every till, generation is a little again. is a little less. That's the video that I talked about that, mm-hmm. that got traction on, on TikTok. Yeah, when I said I know who I am, right? Yeah. nobody's gonna change my mind. Yeah. But that's the TikTok that they took down. Yeah. Yeah. So that that Wait, don't want anybody to know. You had an opinion for. about being yourself? Yeah, pretty much. And they took it down because you yeah. were yourself? Because they can't change my mind. I know who I am. Lord okay. anyways. <laughs> So this was supposed to be an entrepreneur yeah, podcast. This is entre- <laughs> <Yeah>. Sorry, well, <laughs> it's all right. Caleb, Caleb changes everything. <laughs> yeah. So, no, you're good, uh, so how old were you when you started your own flooring business? Uh, I wouldn't say that I started my own. I kind of, my dad taught me how to work from an early age. That's all we did. You know, just if I went to work with him, he made me work. So I always knew I had that in my back pocket if I wanted to do it. I always had. I'm oh, I'm the kind of guy like if I see something cool. I'm not like I'm a multi hobby guy. Like I like to do everything. I like mm-hmm. if I see somebody doing something fun, I want to do it, and I, and I'll do it to my best of my ability. You know, as long as I can. But I, I tried a couple other little things. You know, thought about getting, you know, going to school and, and doing the orthodontist thing. I just, man, I got married so young that I I had to go. How old were you when you got married? Seventeen. Uh, yeah, I was very young. When that's I got like the first time that's like olden days, yo. Oh, dude, I'm dude. telling you. Why'd you get married so young, dude? I think a lot of it was I was trying to prove a lot of people wrong about me, you know. Like, you know, they're probably right in some aspect, you know, we were just living in us kinda. We were young and dumb and we got told no to everything else. Everything was no. You can't go here, you can't do this, you can't you know, you can't be, you know, a hit. So everything was wrong. So, you know, I went out with these most of us boys from that little group down and we we did. So, you know, we were we were boys, so we did what we did, you know. <laughs> I know I, I got kind of put in an ultimatum, you know, where you can either, you know, buck up and take responsibility for what you're doing, or you can walk away and look like a jerk, you know, like you use somebody. So I, know I did what I thought was right at the time. Didn't really know what I'd get myself into. And uh, no hard feelings, you know, just we were pretty young and we didn't have anything. You learned your mistakes. We had different we had different views on church, on the way things should be going, and we just didn't want that. It wasn't healthy. Always fighting, it, it was very unhealthy. You know, both parties, me included. I, I made a lot of mistakes, and uh, you know, things that you know that I'm better for now. But so I just went to work. To, you know, to answer your question, I just started going to work. And I, when I would have my bad days, I'd work more to keep my mind focused on you know mm-hmm. doing something. I'm, something productive. Yeah, I'm the type of person if I'm mad or you know feeling down, instead of going whining about it, like we were talking about earlier. I'd, Put my head down and go do two jobs that day instead of one, you know, until I couldn't work no more. Until I was driving home, I almost didn't feel accomplished unless I was driving home, like trying to keep your eyes open. Yeah, yeah. I felt like okay, that was a good day. Like I, I'm worth something. To me, working hard made me feel like I was worth something because in other aspects of my life, I didn't feel like I was worth much. And you know, not to whine, but you know, just you know, that's how my mind. Well, it's the way you're raised, and you you have you have to feel like if I didn't work like a dog today, that's all I have. And still, I'm guilty of it, you know. Like, and even in friendship things, the only time you know, and I'm not, I'm not gonna be that guy that's like, oh, only time people want to be my friends is when they need something. But a lot of times, that's how it is, man. You go and do stuff for people because you want that friendship. So you'll work and you'll work and you'll go and do this extra stuff. Yeah, you get paid for it, but the your the main focus of what you're trying to do is you're trying to do so much for that person that you can almost award yourself that friendship. And then whenever that doesn't come to fruition, you know, crap, you know, you just feel like. Oh, you want to know who your friends are? Go through something. Yeah, that's it, dude. They always no, for sure. Up. Go, go through something. Like yeah. even something that you did wrong. Yeah. Go through yeah. it. Yep. Yeah. And watch, watch your friends fall away. The ones that you thought were like your ride or die. The ones, yeah. that, the ones you're talking about that you did things for. Yeah. Oh, just out of love. Just out because you love them. Never ask for anything in return. Yeah. Do something wrong. Watch what happens. 
Yeah, Dude, they'll just disappear. They'll yeah. just drop off. They disown you in a second. Yeah. Oh, and years later, later they still up. don't like you. Yeah. yeah. And, so and, and they don't realize too where it's coming from. You know, sometimes you know when you're going through stuff, you might say some off the wall things. You're really just putting it out there to see if someone you know will you know accept kind of what you're going through. You know, because when well, you got expression like, feelings, buddy, I'm really going through some stuff, and you don't do that. So you might, you might like put it off on something else, like say something off the wall or be hateful about something. You're really just kind of lashing out, but you only feel comfortable doing that with a certain select of people. And when you can't do that, you know, it, you know, it kind of just bothers you. So I just, anyways, get back on your, what you're saying. I mean, I just started working, and that's all I got good at. I, I learned how to do so much because that's all I did. Work, work, work. Because you were trying to avoid I was trying to avoid being at home. I was yeah. trying to avoid... Yeah. I was trying to avoid all kinds of things. I didn't. I would work so much to where I was so tired that I had an excuse not to go to church. It was just work was my outlet to get away from all my other stuff that I needed to work on, personally. After I went through all that stuff, man. I, I mean, I in this period of time, you know, from seventeen to twenty, I built a new home. Uh, a lot of materialistic things that I acquired from working so hard. When all this fell through, I felt like I was an old man. Like now, here I am. You know, 22, 23 years old. I've done all this stuff to get this stuff. It's just stuff. Yeah. And I'm not happy. I'm not fulfilled. So I started working on myself. And at that point, you know, yeah, I was going out, you know, because I didn't want to be lonely. You know, I was, I was honored back then. I, and I was single a couple of years. I went back there. I was going over here and going over here. I was being wild, you know, just because I didn't get to do that. Like, I went from straight from being married to, you know, providing right off the bat. You know, and I'm not to say like cliche. I didn't get to party and stuff like that. I didn't really want to party Sorry, back wild then. Oats. <laughs> yeah, but I didn't really, but I didn't really want to back then. You know, I wanted the family. I wanted to to be responsible and have all those things. So I didn't really think about that. So whenever I had a couple of years there, I really had time to self reflect on what I wanted to do the rest of my life. Like, man, I got opportunities to go work. You know, with some some of these you know places down here that you know being a salesman or you know or there was a lot of options open because I knew so many people from doing construction. I mean, there, there was a lot of doors open. I just, I got my mind that I'm, I'm good at this. I'm going to perfect it and offer. I, I wanted to kind of get myself to where I wasn't just doing work. I was kind of doing like little pieces of art in people's homes, even if it wasn't a big thing. But it was just one thing. So I just started getting really good, going to classes, trying to get better at it, uh, getting you know warranties on things to where you know I was I was safe too if something did happen. It was an issue. Cause I don't frame all these houses and stuff, so when you go and do work for people, sometimes you need something like a full, like a, keep yourself from safe in case something bad happens. But uh, I you just started like enjoying build, it. Builders don't build stuff level. <laughs> no, no, they don't. Not anymore. <laughs> they build them so fast now, and the and, and every sub will say, "Well, it's a your responsibility." It's, the framers will say it's the concrete. Yeah, the concrete yeah. will say it's other stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So I just quit even saying that. I just do the best I can do in each, each thing. But I got to where I started enjoying myself. I forgot who I was for a real short period of time. I didn't know what I liked. You know, what, what I, I forgot who I was because I was so busy mm-hmm. trying to be this other thing to provide. And it was always, I was a people pleaser for so long. Just whatever they wanted me to be, that's who I'd be. Just to keep everything happy. And I was miserable on the inside, man. Like, that's how it usually it. is. Yeah. Well, you know, Joe Rogan said is. that most men live their lives in silent desperation. Yeah, man. Yeah. And I would true. try, I used to always use humor as a uh, whether it was funny or not I just used it anyways but I would use humor as kind of an outlet I was always the same way man yeah and then sometimes it was vulgar humor like you know I have a really twisted sense of humor a lot of people misunderstand me because they think that's really how I think it's really not I, just, I really like being normal I just like to joke around about stuff like yeah, that yeah. like I wouldn't really do half the stuff that I say I just, it's just banter so you're fake yeah when it comes to the, <laughs> when it comes to the humor when it comes to the humor <laughs> aspect yeah you kind of have to be to, to get yourself in that mindset to make a laugh yeah. But uh, I just got to where, you know, I just started enjoying myself again. And uh, I kind of had that. I'm trying to finish this all through all this. Yeah, no, yeah. I kind of had this two-year period where I could, I was trying to make decisions. Do I want to continue what I'm doing? At that time, me and I was still working for my dad. Uh, I was like, do I keep doing this? Or do I kind of, do I, do I go and try to get into, like, the business other side of what I do, you know, the, the other end of it? I hated it. Absolutely hated it. You hated like the sales side? I hated, I asked around and I started like, what I did it, I did it kind of a sneaky way. So what I would do is like, I would just like, hey, you guys hiring here? Just playing. 
Because I always joke everywhere I go. Try to, I try when I go into like a place to buy material or go into Lowe's or I meet somebody. I always want to be. I always try to be happy to where they see me. Hey, there's Caleb, and they want to come visit with me because I'm I entertaining or I'm funny or I make their day better. I, even if I'm suffering, I like to bring value to someone's day, make them smile. I want them to want to talk to me. You know, yeah, I want to be course. approachable. I might talk their ear off, but you know they might think I'm crazy when we get done talking. But at least you know I made them laugh a couple times. It made me feel fulfilled to have that conversation. So I would go around and I'd ask people, you know, hey man, you left your job or, you know, yeah. they didn't know that I was interrogating them. They thought I was just joking around and just. You were trying to find out if it would have been yeah. worth it to go yep. to, to go work for somebody yep. else. I was being yeah. sneaky. Most people aren't happy. They don't even like their job. Yep, exactly. Yeah. So well, that's what I was doing. I was like, these people are to school. I think it's a statistic. State their job. I was talking to Elsie Rogers. Hey, Elsie. Hey, Elsie. They do. I know. I know somebody that. Be miserable. I'm just like, what? I'd go to school for seven, eight years and then be miserable? Well, yeah, I'm already miserable. I know a guy the same way. I might as well be rich and miserable. And they, I started thinking so much. Stuff and this and is the thing. They're scared of change because they put mm-hmm. so much time into yep. the one thing. Yep. They got all these school loans. They got yep. all this crap. So what they're doing is they would rather stick it out. Mm-hmm. And a lot of them stick to that because yep. what would my family say if I changed? Or, oh, my God, my parents paid for this school or something like that. Like, mm-hmm. if I just go do something else, I just wasted their time, my time, right? All that stuff. But at the end of the day, it's about you. In order to make everybody else happy, you have to be happy. Yeah. So, and a lot of people. Well, are not most people never learn how to be happy. That's one thing I teach my daughters: yeah. like, hey, learn to be happy by yourself, so that you can be happy with other people. Yeah. Because like people get married, and they don't know how to be happy. They don't know how to be their self. They don't, don't know. Don't they don't know how to find happiness yeah. at being alone. Yep. Like you have to learn to be alone. Yep. Like having other people in your life should be like an extra. Yes. Right. Mm-hmm. But if you can't be alone, and you shouldn't be alone, but if you can't through those times that you are, dude, you'll never make it. That's the truth. Like if you can't encourage yourself yep. and yeah. motivate yourself, like that's why people commit suicide a lot. Yep. You know, it's because they get to a point where they're like, nobody understands me. Nobody, and I'm not, that's a blanket statement, obviously, but like you have to learn to be happy. You have to learn to find happiness to get out of your misery. Like you'll never, you could be in the worst situation possible, but if you just continue talking about how bad your situation is mm-hmm. and never try to fix it, never try to accept it, whatever it is, and be happy, well, your life raised. is going to be terrible. And so, everyone around you is going to be unhappy because they're not going to be around you. So we're raised to go off of what other people think of us. We're raised that way. Like my culture, I've told you a million times, like my people live off of what their neighbor is going to say about them. So they get themselves into debt. They got Serbian there. culture, right? Yeah, yeah. I was there, man. I was there. Like I used to, you know, drive a car I couldn't afford to make people think that, you know, yeah, I got I money. A lot. I used to, you know, do all this crap, and a lot of people are that way. We're raised, you know, like you grow up, hey, be nice to your friends, or what they're gonna think about, or, or like, hey, why don't you go to school? What are our neighbors gonna think about if you don't go to school? Like, who cares? Go broke, trying to look rich, dude. I, that's I, how my people are. Just to be. Listen, I've had a lot of friends that are really wealthy. Yeah. Well, I, you know what I mean? So it's like, some of them, I have to be careful what I say here. So some of them, they're a joy to be around. And other ones, they make you feel like you're so inadequate that no matter what kind of money they have, unless you're doing what they're doing, yeah, it's always got to be about them. It's the so, evil thing, man. so if they do this and you don't decide you don't want to do that, you're not important to them at that point. But if you want to do that, you almost have to, you almost have to change your whole life to fit into their life, to be their friend. Mm -hmm. So I've learned the older I get that, man, I gotta be happy and content with what I'm doing. If you wanna be a part of that, I'd love it. I don't want nothing from you. If you wanna, you know, bless me or whatever, great. You know, if you feel like I deserve that for being your friend or for what I've done in the past, great. But I don't want that. All I want is to hang out. Dude, I'm I'm so chill, just sit around the campfire, visit. I don't even drink anymore, Go golf. Yeah, just, <laughs> just live life, man. Just we just one enjoy time, it. dude. One time, dude. You called me right as I was transitioning from losing an employee to training a new employee. I would love to just go every weekend, yeah. every weekend, and I'm almost getting to that point again to where I can. But okay. I well, get, maybe come we, back into WSG and work. Yeah, with well, time. when you give your word to people, it's really important. Like you know, I I kick myself in the butt. Oh, well, that day that you missed, you had a lot of good shots. Did I? Yeah, oh yeah. yeah, we had a four person scramble. We played oh, three yeah. person. You played, you played me. And we played, yeah, yeah. we, we <laughs> dropped the ball down and say, let's see what Caleb. Oh, hey, there's a lot of times Caleb saved our butt. So yeah. you know, we appreciate that. That was the that. mulligan card. Yeah. 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 
so it was, hey, it was I a did, whole list of I did, volumes. <laughs> hey, I, I got COVID and that, I had to do the same thing. I, I had to drop out and he called me afterwards. He's like, yeah, you made a lot of good shots today. Yeah. <laughs> and literally every time we'd all mess up and I was like, let's see what David's going to do. And whoever, it doesn't matter, whoever swung, the shot was like perfect. Uh, and we're like, yeah. all right. Well, David a, was here yeah, in spirit. Yeah, David was <laughs> in spirit, yeah. So probably wouldn't hit that well. But who knows? No, I'd like say it was that. actually more beneficial that you weren't there. I played Saturday morning. I got a, I got a birdie on seventeen. I didn't try to par or anything else, dude. I, I almost eagled it. It was really cool. So, because my daughter plays, you know, Your oldest? both of them actually, but just my oldest one with mm-hmm. me and our, my friend Jeremy. And dude, I'm like, I haven't played in like a month, and I'm hit, I'm hit, Jeremy. <clears throat> yeah, and yeah. so I'm hitting some good shots. I had a couple chances for birdie and par, you know, putting obviously, and then on seventeen at Shiverdecker, I hit a. Really good drive, probably better than I've hit in a long time. I was sitting 96 out, took a 53 degree, and I, it almost eagled, dude. It rolled like two inches from the hole, and I was only like four foot out, and I, I got a birdie, and that was good. You know, I shot like a 93, but I had a birdie, so I, I was okay. Yeah, you know, golf is different for me and probably you guys. I, I enjoy the camaraderie of golf. Oh, it's fun. Yeah, it was more just than having that. a good time. Yeah, that's, I used that's to be, what we do. I used to be overwhelmed with competitive. Like when we race, it's all stuff. about you, though. Golf just, is all about you. Yeah, I used to be so competitive. I don't know what happened. Just that, like, well, that little problem issue. I just lost my drive to be so competitive. I, I'm trying to get that back. Competitive edge. Yeah, I yeah. just I got to where like, man, I'd just be happy to just, you know, not mediocre. That's not what I'm saying. Yeah, but I just got I got happy. You don't have to be number one. Exactly. It's not about me anymore. Yeah, it's Especially okay if you don't win every yeah. time. But <laughs> yeah. I want to. Yeah. But I want to, but I'm I'm okay. I, I know loss is part of life now. I guess that's what I'm getting at. Like I know sometimes you're gonna fail and you're gonna lose, so you need to be okay with yourself and look yourself in the mirror and not just you're a loser. You're, like your you're whole gonna, life depended yeah, upon exactly. yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. you know a lot of golfers, pro golfers go yeah. through that. They actually judge their life by where they finish their golf tournament and some of them quit. And some of them take the sabbaticals that's because not, well that's no, their life though. Live, it, yeah, it is to me and you. But we do the same thing because when I because we're not booking appointments, yeah. you know. I mean, you've talked about this. You know, yeah. imagine if all of a sudden you didn't have work, you would feel that yeah. as a man. Yeah. You would feel yeah. that if you were not booking appointments. Me and you've talked about this. Yeah, you, have you a feel that. <laughs> yeah. yeah, you're yeah, like, man, like, like yeah. is it me? Like, you feel like a failure. That's you, start, you, you start to question everything. Yeah. You start to question yourself. If I don't, well, if I don't have a few months worth of work, that one appointment, you're like, oh, I'm back on top. Yeah, that's it. You're back on the map. <laughs> yeah, I, I do that all the time. I, if I don't have you know a couple months worth of work booked up ahead of time, I start being like, oh, I'm not getting the phone calls. And then all of a sudden, go on vacation. Old, you'll get thirty. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Go yeah. on vacation. You'll get so, phone calls. So perfect it's like example. When I mow, right? Every time I yeah. mow, it rains. I tell all my family, I said, "It's getting dry. I better go mow." Dude, I'm telling you, every time I mow my grass, it rains you're, the next day. Because your name rains. It's like I'm amused. Because your name is something. Dude, how it worked like W G, right? It was going slow. I'm not gonna lie. It was going slow for a little while. And then I was like, you know what, let me revamp my tee shot. I got time, mm-hmm. right? So I restarted. We go and we actually get a very good response around mm-hmm. Very good. So we, we did two uh, festivals. We crushed them both. Yeah. Crushed them. Like people love what we sell, right? Dude, I recruit a couple of guys. Boom. Just yeah. like a nuclear bomb, dude. Now I can't catch up. I can't catch up. I work till like 2 a.m. I wake up at 6. I'm running appointments till like 10. And then I'm printing shirts till like 2 a.m. And I'm doing like that, dude. It just but who are you answering to? Nobody. I know I'm doing it for myself. That's what I'm saying. So like I'm doing it for myself and my family. So it's, I love it. You're, it's rewarding. Wait, so to get, to get to what you asked me when we first started this podcast, you asked me why. That's why. Yeah. Because so, it's it's a re- you're getting a full reward on your effort. You're not getting a thirty percent reward on your effort or a fifteen dollar an hour reward on your effort. Yes. You're getting full effort, and then how you want to disperse that productivity you want to disperse it to you know you hire this guy or hire that guy but you can manage what you disperse out if you disperse you know 15 percent of your time for me to this guy you know you're still you know at your percentage and you're happy when you're working for somebody else you're only limited to what they think you're worth it that's it and, and especially when you if, know if you're making that they, money, they make and it's not to say that there are a lot of people that make way more money than me oh working yeah for oh and have a job yeah, yeah. but they will always be valued to themselves what that our boss values in that. So they don't have that mental freedom or that freedom 
And sometimes you have to be okay with not being an emotional. I mean, I want to be rich. Everyone does. Yeah, everybody does. I, and you, like I tell everyone all the time, you've never We're seen anyone to. frowning We're on a jet ski. You see them skipping across the water? I've never. So a jet ski is one of the most fun things that you, that you could ever do yeah. in your whole life. Have you ever been on a jet ski? Yeah, of course. It's the best. No one frowns. No, no one. So money is, is key to happiness to some extent. So it's not the love, not, not the it's love not all of money, of it, but it helps. It it helps. But, but like you said though, like what I was gonna say is, so what you're saying is through your hard work, you're becoming more successful. Because I think that's where we lack well, sometimes so much. Sometimes you work for somebody, no, the harder no. you work, the less the, the, you're making. You're not valued. Well, the, you hear people get passed too. up for promotions all the time. Yes. Because they're oh, you know, Jeff didn't work as hard as me. Blah blah blah. Jeff just had an in. Well, guess what? If you work for yourself, there ain't no Jeff. But I'm sorry to anybody <laughs> named Jeff. <laughs> to keep, to keep you no. at that point, though, a lot of times too, if you outperform in that area, yeah. Like uh, I've got an uncle that works over here for General Mills. Sorry, General Mills, but they they work over at General Mills. He never missed. I mean, the guy's loyal, very quiet, keeps himself, hardworking guy. He worked there for twenty five years, maybe more, because he's so good at what he does. They won't promote him. Because yeah. if they promote him, they have to get somebody to fill that That's spot. And they won't do as good and, as and they won't perform like and him. Plus, also, so, the guy so above he, him. So, for working hard, you're not getting any benefit. Yeah, from I told him, man, start being lazy. Yeah, we can't afford, yeah. We can't afford to yeah. lose you from where you're at, kind of thing. Well, plus, also, like, whoever's observing so him, if he got promoted, you know? Yeah. If he got promoted, he would take somebody else's spot. So that's somebody that's above him too. Yeah. Is like, no, nah, no. Nah, well, you know that he's not, exactly. and they yeah, know that dude. he's not going to leave. He's been there for twenty five years. It's what else political. is he going to do? It's too political. Dude, you know why I got out of Marine? I picked up rank of staff sergeant in seven years. I thought that was going to say that. So check this out: rank of staff sergeant seven years. Some people takes them ten years. Some people twelve years. Some people never get it. They get processed out of the Marine Corps. Yep. I got it in seven years. I'm like, all right, next rank is gunnery sergeant in seven. How do I get there? They're like, oh. There has to be three of these guys to retire, to open up seven of these positions, to open up. And these motherfuckers are lazy. They get so comfortable, they hit their 20 year mark, they can retire, they don't want to get out. So the most they can do is 30 years. Mm -hmm. So they don't do shit for the next 10 years. So just so waste 20 to 30, time. is it a higher pension? So you get 2% two percent extra pension per year. So like at 20 years, you get 50% of your base pay. Yeah. Right? So at 30 years, you get At 30 years, you get like, what, extra 10 years, that's extra 20%. So you get 70% oh, of you your base pay. So it's 2% every year. 2% every year, oh, wow. right? But still, yes. it's like, dude, it's like when you did 20 years, yeah. you already made a paycheck for life. Yeah. So everybody that's coming up on the bottom that's trying to get promoted, they just jam up the whole well, thing. I don't know what else to do with their life. Dude, I had they a don't guy realize 30 that they years. have 10 years to go do something else. Plus that income, then they can have this income, dude, I knew and this income. They don't think years, about it that way. 30 years in the Marine Corps. Like this guy was freaking out to the point where he left his wife. He like wasn't coming around his kids. He didn't know what the hell he was gonna do when he gets out. And this is a guy that was a master gunnery sergeant in the Marines, which is the highest enlisted rank you can achieve, right? That Marines look up to. So you got like twenty thousand young Marines like, man, one day I want to be like that guy, right? And he's like a little bitch, scared so to retire. How he's gonna act in society? Dude, you have like seventy percent of your base pay. You're probably gonna get a hundred percent VA after thirty. It wasn't years. about the money. It was just. I don't know what what the hell he was worried about. Like I never sat down with him to talk to him, but he was freaking out. Him and his wife got divorced. Like an inmate, you know. He they, was just they crazy. So many years in prison. Brooks they don't was know how to act when they get out. So when I when I talk to people so right now about Marines, I'm like, yeah, I did ten years. You know, just like you would say about prison. Yeah. Like, yeah, I, you know, maximum security prison, ten years. You know, I did it. <laughs> he didn't know what he's gonna do every day. You're just missing yeah. the neck tattoo. And I was like, I was like, dude, just. Dude, you already got steady income. Go become an entrepreneur. Go start a company. Yeah, so start a business. Start, start, you can like, do 10 years to work dude, on Dude, you have else. all the time yeah. in the world, man. Like, you can do whatever you want. You don't have to worry about basic bills, food. You know, you know like, just go build something. Yeah. But they don't do that, man. That's you know, that's, that's what I was going to say earlier is that most people, like, I see on Facebook and I see on, like, Craigslist and all that stuff, people all the time need a job, need a job, need a job. So reach out to them. Hey, I've got an opportunity for you to have a great job. Not even a job. It's huh? your it's your business. It's, to work. it's your business. Yeah. yeah well, how much know. does it pay by the hour? It doesn't pay by the hour. It's commission. <laughs> oh, I can't do I can't do commission. Why not? Why can't you do commission? Because it would rely on you actually not being told what to do all the time. Yeah, yeah, you got you. You know, so you can go make. Oh so like you kind of like we say, uh, you know, if I gave you a huge commission check, would you take it? Would you decline it? Would yeah. You no. A if I told you there was a hundred thousand dollars in that neighborhood, <clears throat> would you go get it? Well, yeah. 
there's a hundred thousand dollars in that neighborhood. Go get it. You know what I love about commission? If I close a good piece of business, I make like three, four, five thousand bucks off of like two hours of my work. Yeah. So you made a work so like you, you made a month, hours. month salary in two right? hours. In two hours. Guess what I do the rest of the time? You can self develop. You can be a better husband. <laughs> you can be a better father. Start okay. another business. You're not rushing to work. You start another business. You do a million other things. And then all you have to do is close one of those deals like every two months. Well, people don't see <laughs> you know it though. I mean? Like I do it on the side. And like I average a good income on the side. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? And I do it one day a week most of the time. And like so I try to tell these guys that. Or I try to reach out and they're like, well, what's it entail? And like, I don't even want to tell them anymore. It's Literally, fun. I told it's the guy fun. the other day, he said, he said, what is it? And I said, or he said, okay, I'm interested. What it, blah, blah, blah. And I said, okay, it's going to take hard work. You're going to have to be self-motivated. I said, <laughs> it's commission, so you have to go make your own money, you know. And like, I never heard anything back. Yeah. But like, most people can't do it. No, like, because people don't have belief in themselves. 100%. And you know what? I didn't either. But guess what? You make yourself like set a freaking goal, dude. This pisses me off. Like I'm very passionate about this. Like set a goal and don't give up till you get it. Doesn't matter Either what you do. Set a small goal. Set something that you yeah, know is attainable. To start off with, right? Set something that you know that like if you're gonna start running and you know you can't make it to the end of the driveway. I was telling you, right? Run half a driveway. No, that's <laughs> saying if you know you can't make it to the end of your driveway, say my goal is to get to the end of the driveway. Yeah. And then once you get there, be like, okay, now I'm going to get to the map box. I don't care if it's another 10 foot. Make a goal and then and, surpass it, and then surpass it a little bit. Each and time. then, yeah, boom. You know, but so I can't life's, say anything right now because I haven't been. Life's a slam dunk much, when you have. My goals on the physical side yeah, of things. Life's but. a slam dunk when you have low goals. Mm -hmm. Yep. You know, because you never. It's easy. Remember when you used to I play? I make my goal every day. <laughs> yeah. Well, you know, it's like what when is you used to play on the baby, wake up and roll out the baby bed. basketball hoop where you could. You're like dunking and you're like, yeah. I, I just now recently now when you said that it just made me it sparked something that I've challenged myself and it's really not me challenging myself but now that I'm in a routine of it I'm saying that it's challenging me but my kids started school my, mm -hmm. my oldest son my, my oldest son crew he just turned three so he started uh, preschool Turtle Talks over the line up and uh, he has to be at school at seven and my biggest deal because I have my own business is I go out of bed at 7 30 Hey, get on the job because most of the places I get stuff they don't open till eight thirty, so I can afford to have that extra. I didn't realize the, what I was losing for all these years by not getting up early, having a little bit of time to myself. Mm -hmm. Dude, mentally, the last four or five months I have it's so. I mean, my wife she said something the other day about it because I got up and I made us uh, trout and eggs and like half brown. I did. I just got up and made breakfast. Went to the gym because I have a gym at my house now. I went to the gym for an hour. Worked out. I looked at my phone after I got to listen to music. Worked out in the gym a little bit. I looked down. It was six thirty. I'm like, dude, I've already done so much. Work That's at six thirty. You feel accomplished. Yes. And then you get in there and you feel like a badass. You're like, dang, yeah, yeah. This is a, this is what this is what keeps me changing my life. Changing yes, my exactly. life. Exactly. Yeah. Went took my son to school. Went and started a job. And then, dude, I just felt good. And and my goal right now is to keep that consistent. So like this morning, I stayed up a little late with my son. He wanted to watch something. I didn't, I didn't even think about it. I got up this morning at seven, and I got a little late start. I didn't get up at five like I did the other day. I got up at seven. I got into school about. He had to be at school before seven forty-five. We got there right at seven thirty. My day was, and I felt like crap all morning because now I know the benefits of getting up. Okay, so now that's hour. my challenge. Yeah. You said set your goals. My goal now is to try to wake up at least by five thirty every day and start my day that way. That's what I'm working on right now. And dude, I'm telling you, it's just- And you'll see the effects of it. Yes, and like losing yeah. weight, we talk about- And it's a slow, you're, you're gonna mess no. up. You're gonna mess up. There's some days you're gonna mess up. Don't beat yeah. yourself up about it, but know that you messed up. Keep it in the back of your mind, man, I fucked up this morning. Yeah. I didn't do, I I cheated myself. You're not cheating. I'm yeah. not cheating my son or my wife or my daughter. I'm cheating myself. Yeah. No, yeah, you're I, I, I fucked myself this morning. I, you know, I cheat. I put myself at a disadvantage this morning where I could have, you know, kept, because when you complete your goal, like you said, when you complete a small attainable goal, you are so rewarded yourself. But make sure you move that it goal reflects, up. Reflects it reflects your whole day, yeah. and it really does. A lot of people say that, like we see it from these rural areas. We see all these podcasts and all these rich people. Yeah, I get up at four o'clock, and we're like, yeah, that'd be nice. Yeah, that'd be nice. Me and my son have kids. No, but you can do it. But when you really do it, yeah. and you, 
and it's like, dude, you can tell. Like, he needs to. Oh, yeah. Whenever we, we started I've playing basketball for years, yeah. but I don't get enough. You know what? I, I haven't been to years. basketball in two weeks. Dude, I feel a little bit sluggish. I haven't like been this, in like a month. The first, my finger. the first day that I went killed me, bro. Like, I literally fell down twice because my legs came out. For real. They did. Hey, the put and, a pagata me, dude. Yeah. And so, dude, you don't play so all day the next day the first time you played. That was so funny. So, point guard, we just goes like from... No, it was. I would just raise my hand and pass throw. the ball. Oh God, yeah, dude, you're, you're like <laughs> seven foot tall. Here you're six four, and I'm five eight. I'm the shortest guy out there, and they're like, you guard him, and I'm like, oh my God, like what? All he has to do is like sky hook get over my head. It doesn't matter what is that. I just go like this. The guy passes me the ball, and I just shoot. Yeah. So <laughs> we guys do this at the Y. At the Y. Yeah, so yeah, at the Neosho Y at five thirty. Neosho. Yeah. Neosho Y M two. Oh, that's a good gap. Yeah, I forgot you guys actually knew. But anyway, so we. So I haven't been in a couple weeks. I've never been to it. Me neither. Yeah. But it, I felt better though. After I went for like, I went two weeks consistently, mm-hmm. and then life happens, and you just miss once, and all of a sudden you're missing. Like, mm-hmm. every, oh, you're just not get, you're just not getting up. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because like that seven o'clock. Oh, if you it, well, if the next day though, if you went ahead and just got up at seven again, mm-hmm. it's just so easy to lose that consistency. Yeah. And for it to not be important anymore. And then you start telling yourself that it's okay. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. That's it. That's yeah. it. And then one day you yeah, just sit up I and you're like, that, and then you go. Well, how did I get here? Oh yeah, that those two days. You look back at those two days, and in my mind it was okay. Yep. Yep. Now That's I need it. to get now. I've, now I've gained back. All over I've gained back, yeah. Yeah. gained back three or four pounds. Yeah. You know. So, anyways, well, we didn't really. <laughs> Entrepreneur house floor. Dude, I don't. I don't get up anymore uh, early because, dude, I work to like midnight to two. Oh. I get up at like this morning. I had appointment to six. I was working to like two a.m. last night. I was sick. That it was just like it's ridiculous. So I don't really, I haven't been in the gym month and a half. I don't feel good. Yeah. Like I believe the reason I felt sick yesterday because I haven't been in the gym for a month and a half. Yeah. And it's like, I, and it's all mental too because you feel weaker. Yeah. And your mind starts to accept. I think a lot of sickness and stuff is from your mental state. Yeah. It, it's oh, what yeah. you. It, it, it's it's what you if I get eat, sick, the first thing I, I do is go run. Yeah. And sweat or go to work. I never miss if I'm sick and, and if, unless I'm in like a house where the people are living there and stuff like that. I, I won't go in. I'll, I'll find like if I got I, most of the time I got a couple things going. I'll try to do something outside where I'm not in someone's home or I'm getting really sick or whatever. Yeah. But I'll go sweat it out, dude. It's mm-hmm. miserable the first four or five hours, but once you get going, get your day started, you start sweating. And under some mm-hmm. circumstances, you need to stay home too. Yeah. Well, because rest. I don't, I don't want to encourage somebody to go out there and get sick, fall down, and die. But once you start sweating, and getting your body going, your body naturally will get rid of those viruses will, and toxins. And you get home, you don't even realize it because you've already had your whole day. Get home, you feel great. Well, yeah. the worst thing you your can, wife's like, "Are you still sick?" No. Dude, the worst thing you can do is just lay down and kind of like, just give up on it. Like, okay, I'm sick. You're gonna be whatever. sick regardless. Might as well so, make yeah. money. So yeah, that's it. Yeah. So make you feel better. Difference, yeah. difference of opinion. Anyway. There, when I get sick, like when I know I'm getting sick, I go to sleep. Mm-hmm. The first thing, because your body heals itself when you sleep. Mm-hmm. That's science. That's science. But. Whenever I start to feel like, okay, because sometimes, like you said, you're sick, but you can't even stand up. You know what I mean? You're not going That's anywhere. It. It's not yeah. safe for you to drive. So you sleep. But as soon as you start to feel like, okay, I'm up, go go start doing stuff around your house. Yep. Like, don't just lay there on the couch and watch TV. Oh, it's still sick. Like, get up, start do things around your house until you're like, okay, now I can drive. Yep. Now I'm going to work. Like, you don't have to go around people. But, yeah, go sweat it out. Go do things, and your body will. But, like... You know, a lot of people, our problem is now, like you're talking about, and uh, you told me the other day, like, and I've slept. Dude, that affects you. You mm-hmm. have to sleep. Yeah. You know what I mean? You have to sleep. And I told you that the other day, there was a, kids, but there was a day. Well, there was, my wife takes care of the kids. Well, there was the other day, day, there was the other day yeah. that I didn't sleep all night long, remember? And I came in, and dude, I was just like, I was done. Mm-hmm. You know? You got to sleep. You got to get six hours of sleep, man. Mm-hmm. Like. Yeah. You just try to. I'm guilty like four to five I'm guilty of it too. Half, yeah, and it's going to catch up to you. It's catching up to you. I can tell you look like, tired dude, right I'm now. I'm like smoke, dude. <laughs> yeah. I'm smoking. But it will well, you know catch what? up to you. going to keep pushing. But here's the thing we're talking about <laughs> being an entrepreneur and stuff. What time is it right now? Yeah, it's Wednesday at 2 p.m. What is it? What do you say on the clock? We're not sliding hot dogs down the conveyor belt. You know what I mean? Yeah. With the glasses on. I'm not pushing the lid off. the head in there. I mean, not knock anybody. That's what I'm saying. We need people. That do that, but yeah. if you hot want, dog, I could deal with that hot dog. But I'm just saying, if you <laughs> if you need, if you want to start a business, just, just really don't need it. If you want to start a business, <laughs> just start it. Like that's yeah. the whole thing. Yeah. That's the whole thing in the podcast. If you want to be better, just start being better. 
Like, we're talking about, man, I'm going to start. Just do it. Mm-hmm. Like, shut up and do it. Yep. Like, don't complain if you're not doing anything about it. If this you're is, doing something about it, you can complain a little bit. This oh, is allow a little bit of complaint. Like, if you want to just go to a job and go do a job and not have to worry about anything, not have any responsibilities, whatever, do that. But if you're that person that's going to a job, and then in the back of your mind, you're like, I should be doing something more. I should be doing something more. You're not living up to Just fucking potential. go do it. Yeah. Just go start it. Go do it. Find something on the side. Hustle. I don't know. Five hours a week. Ten hours a week. It can turn into a start business. Somewhere. It can turn lot, into a full income. A lot of people say say that, and a lot of like I've even heard other people say it on different you know platforms say that. And the first thing that pops into my mind is you know they can say that because you know they've already done it. The thing is they don't realize it is you know, everybody started somewhere. Exactly. Yeah. But there's so there's so much so much fear because they're like. Well, I I got a truck payment. I've got all these bills. I, I've got all this stuff going on. I can't afford to step away from my income to go and try this other thing out. Let's start a side hustle. Here's, but here's the thing: leave the house. You know, don't pay. Sell your home. Go get a smaller home. But what is the neighbor going to be think? happy? <laughs> Who cares? That's what I'm saying, though. Like, there's been times in my life where you know things look rough, but I thought about I'm really not that happy. Because I wasn't my full potential. I know I was still working, you know, doing other things. I was I was doing my own business, but I wasn't enjoying it. So I was talking about doing something else. And I was always worried, like, man, you know, people will think I just don't have work because I don't do good work or I'm not putting out a good product or something like that. Thing is, is sometimes you have to not worry about just what people think, what you drive, what house. Dude, I live on a low budget as far as my expense. Like, I got buddies that went and bought toys, and they go buy brand new stuff. Yeah. I I can buy brand new stuff. I've got great credit. I have family credit. Yeah. I can buy good stuff. I've already trained myself. Well, why can't I go buy something that's two or three years old yep. that does the exact same damn thing? Cars. Because I'm not that competitive anymore. Like, I, I'm it 30 years matter, old. Man. It doesn't I'm matter, not, dude. You know, I'll go buy something that's a couple years old. I'll go have just as much fun as they will. And I don't have a payment, or you know what I mean. I'm not ten thousand in debt or twenty thousand so dollars playing, in debt. You're playing a long term game. Yeah. Right. So right Dude. now, all you're doing is saving money, and investing in aside. things that will make me money. money. That's it. I, it's, now, not, it's not. I can't pull from my fruits of my labor yet. But I also realize that as a self-employed person, I have to think. I, I watched my dad work his ass off, dude, his whole life. Yeah. My dad hurts every day when he wakes up. He mm-hmm. lies and acts like he's not hurting. I see it. He wakes up. The dude has worked, dude, not just because he's my father. My dad has worked so hard for everyone else around him, done things for people, and he never bitches or complains. You know, he never really. He's such a nice guy, dude. dude I'm he's telling, such everyone a nice loves guy. my dad. Everyone loves my dad more than they love me because I'm very vocal. My dad's more of the quiet, you know, son, it'll, it'll be all right. They did you wrong, what you do, just keep doing your thing. And I'm more like, no, fuck you. You did me wrong and get even. I just, I'm, I'm the older I get now that I have kids, I'm becoming more like him. You're growing up a little bit. Exactly. Yeah. It took me a little longer. But I've always been a hard worker, but the mentality part, I've always been like, well, you did me wrong. I'm going to go punch you in the it's face. Not you know? it's yeah. not and I'm really it's good not. in a verbal battle. I'm a great verbal ninja, man. If we get in a verbal battle, I'm winning. Like, I can come up with the stuff real quick. You're touching my ninja. keyboard like a keyboard oh, warrior. Oh, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a verbal warrior. And, uh, you know, I just, it might be dumb stuff, but, I mean, it pisses you off. Yeah. You know, because you get a reaction on people. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> because you'll go there. Yeah, I will. Because you'll go. You'll go I'm the like, guy the in the thing, funeral, like, what's that smell, man? The thing that, <laughs> that no, seriously, the thing, the thing that you think is off limits that that oh you know, like God, that he won't touch, he's gonna touch it. Oh yeah. You know, sure. I mean, that's it's just, sure. he'll touch the swimsuit area. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Of your mind. Yeah. It's good, man. I'm a mannequin toucher too. That was another thing that was on that damn show, man. The guy takes a mannequin home and lays down in bed with it. I'm like, how does that show the stuff? Give these young kids this twisted mindset of what's what acceptable. Is, They're fucking up the young man. Yeah, are, man. Bad. It's like it's, we all joke about it because we're men. We're just screwing around. But some of these people live that stuff. Like they get into it. They get off on it. Dude, like, you never know who you're sitting next to. Dude, you. I'm yeah. telling you. Know, <laughs> like I've said some off the wall stuff with people. They're like, yeah, I like that guy. Like, oh man, I was totally kidding. Yeah, that's <laughs> a joke. Yeah, it was a it's joke, a joke. Buddy. <laughs> It's messed up, man. Let's not a talk about that no more with him. Yeah. Matter yeah. of fact, I lose my number. I got to change. Well, I went to school with the kid. I, I always had a bad vibe about him. He uh, was always, he was kind of feminine. And uh, I I was really country growing up. My dad was really bad. Like, hey, son, don't do that. You're 
supposed to be. Don't do that, Father. Get a sis, get up. Just, so. just, just want to he's doing his best version of what what he came from, trying to better what he had into me. So that was his only way he knew how to raise me right without making me turn you know turn into this you know whiner. Yeah, exactly. He wanted me to be. I mean, I I see it now that I have a son. I get what he's doing. I used to hate my dad because we'd get into yeah. arguments all the time. And, but I didn't realize now that I have a son, I'm like, man, my dad did learn a lot. He took the time <laughs> yeah. to beat my ass. I'm, I'm, so so glad, I'm so glad he beat my ass. Yeah. I'm so glad sense, that he yeah. got on to me for every time I did something stupid. I'm glad he got on to me. He let me, and he let a lot of stuff slip when I was a teenager, but he didn't want to be so hard on me that I just rebelled. Yeah, that you hated him. That you yeah. hated him. But yeah. he did it when I was younger. They were very consistent with beating my ass. My mom and my dad. They both. Look, and I have a kid till he's seven. So mm -hmm. yeah, so so I've seen this kid, man. I've seen it from a young age. I just knew there's something going on here, you know. And he's just he lives up to me, man. I'm thinking about the kid. He was a homosexual. Now he's in prison because he was on that grinder. It's like a website for like lesbians, gays, stuff like that. They can do whatever they want. I'm I'm not trying to. So well, thank you for explaining it because it's, it's like, I know the I well, well, I looked, yeah. well, whenever the police report came out, it listed what he got in trouble for and all this kind of stuff. Yeah, he's doing. I, I think he's still in jail or prison yeah. for it. But I mean, I seen it at a young age of like what not to do. You know what I mean? Like what not to associate with. But that's going on now. Now. now people are like, oh, don't say that about him. You know? Like I called the principal up and I said, dude, I think I owe you a couple squats. Remember you spanked me for calling it, you know, a name and. I was right. So do I get them squats back? I'll be down there at three. I'll come give you your squats back. I think you gave me six. So lean over the trash can, I'll be down there at three, come give you your squats back. And he laughed, he's a buddy of mine, but I mean yeah. they they uh I mean just this world, man, it's just getting bad with just let everything be okay. Just let everything be okay. Don't say no moral just, compass. Just none. Like do whatever you want, marry your dog, whatever you want to do. Have you seen this? Yeah, that's for real. Furries? That's a real thing. Have you Never seen the furries? Dog. Yeah. These cats. Kids that's why I've heard cats. about this. They want to put litter boxes in the bathroom. In the in the classroom. I think Carl Junction had a meeting. It didn't pass, but uh, are you it, fucking serious? They, 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 some girl shit. wants to be her pronoun or whatever. I don't even like saying it because it's so depressing. But she wants everyone to say she was a cat. I told my son, I said, hey, son, if a girl comes, a kid, it doesn't matter boy or girl or it or whatever her pronoun is. They come hissing and meow like a cat. You just start sneezing on her until you're allergic. <laughs> start sneezing on that mother. Bob her on the nose, tell her yeah. no. Yeah. That's yeah. so crazy. Damn, that's a bad kitty. You gotta remember. So this, 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 this is my thing, right? This Kick is my it, thing. I mean. Now that kid, the confused kid. Yeah. Right, this is what happens. I'm gonna go to school. Mm -hmm. Everybody's gonna, you know, accept them for who they are. Uh, and they're gonna get into a job one day. Maybe, um, Position that people are gonna look up to. Or yeah, something like Burger King. Yeah. Maybe take Nancy Pelosi's spot, <laughs> right? And that's that's where people get confused. Like yeah. you can be like that, and that, and that what they do is they actually encourage it and they put them up on the pedestal yeah. so people follow them. Like right? I was saying earlier, they're so, living in guilt, so they want everyone to accept it. So they put it on these high platforms where everyone thinks it's the norm, to where conversations like this won't happen. Yeah, because if they can eliminate conversations like this, because we would have this conversation if these mics weren't here. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah. It's not like we're putting on a, a front. Like this is yeah, how we yeah, talk normally. This is how we talk. Yeah, they yeah. want to eliminate these kind of conversations that happen all over these red mm -hmm. states, conservative states, because if they can kill this mentality to where we have a say or we have a feeling about that yeah. at all, then they, they can push their well, agenda. They can make people cast. For so long, we've been the silent majority. Dragons. We've been the silent majority. Mm -hmm. Well, because we don't give a shit. Yeah, you know, we, we just go to work every day. We try to have the best life we can. With our these two hands, we try to put out the best kind of life we can for our families. That's all we give a shit about. We don't care. We you know, we that. vote and we try to stay political at some point. None of us really know what's going on up there. We no, get told a certain things, no. so we we do the best of our ability with the knowledge that we're given to be good people, raise our kids right, and provide things that are decent for our families. That's it. And we stayed quiet. The middle class has stayed quiet for so long because we really don't give a shit. But now they're putting the thumb on us. And saying you have to accept this and you have to accept that and you actually have to pay more for that now and now it's not okay for you to do this and, and, and a lot of us are just we're so confused of the unknown that we're starting to get irritated and then I think we expressed ourselves pretty good when we had that Trump they had that Trump rally and like 3.2 million people showed up at the White House they had to put a cage around the whole thing I mean, what's January that 6th? yes 
I was what's there. It, yeah, what's that tell you? I mean, what's that tell you, though? Yeah. That we really do care. Yeah. But you have to, I don't understand why they have to push us to the point where we have to have a revolution to, to do something. But that's, that's the point. You know I mean? Why so don't the they America, just... United States of America has been a superpower for, like, since World War II, right? And one of the biggest excelling countries, fastest excelling countries for a very long time, right? The, the beacon of freedom, whatever mm-hmm. you want to call it. The rest of the world doesn't operate like that. So people that run the world, they have to take us down from the inside so we comply to. Yeah. What they don't understand is that's not how that's going to go. I don't understand how we're going to get all this free stuff away from children in the back. We're the ones that pay the most taxes. Yeah, it's, it's not about that anymore. Because we're not smart enough to know how to handle our taxes where we don't have to pay in as much like the like the elites. They so, don't even need to pay taxes. Anymore. They don't even need taxes. They're just going to, hey, yeah, print another $17 trillion. All right. Yeah, but they have to, their money has to be accounted for. Yeah. Okay, so before conspiracy theorists, right? So before September 11th, on September 10th, DOD, Department of Defense, mm-hmm. lost $2.3 trillion. Fuck, we lose $2.3 trillion. What happened next day? Airplanes fly into the building. All the, uh, so we are the conspiracy theorists. So, like, it, it, dude, it's like whatever you evidence. see, it's not actually what you're seeing. Yeah. Whatever, whatever we see, it's actually like set up for us to see. Like, I'm going to college, right? And then they tell us, hey, write about this. These are your credible sources. So they got their information from that source. Now they're gonna tell you that's a credible source. So one person told you to do it, you researched it, you found it again. It can be the biggest lie in the world, doesn't matter. When I was trying to go for it, counter intel in the Marines, um, I was going through a whole screening and I was supposed to renounce my citizenship so I could get top secret clearance. That's when I gave up and I didn't do it, right? But um, in order, you know, they want you to write everything. What, what citizenship? The, Croatian. Oh, okay. So they want to completely be done with Yeah, that. yeah, be completely, just be American alone. So they wouldn't even let you travel then if you said that? Uh, what do you mean? Like you wouldn't be able to go back and forth again? Yeah, you could no, no, just no, be an American citizen. You can go, I would just be uh, American yeah, citizen only instead of two. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, so I have American and I have Croatian. I got you. Right, they want okay. me to give up the Croatian, right? Yeah. And what happened is I went over there and they want you to see everything from the unbiased point of view, right? That's counterintelligence, right? So they told me to write an essay. And he's like, I want you to write an essay on atrocities committed by Serbian people on the Albanians. Now, they know I'm Serbian. They know how I feel about that. So they want me to go into their bullshit sources when I live through it, mm-hmm. right, and write what they want me to write. And I'm like, no, screw that. To back so, I wrote, so this is what I did. So I wrote a, two essays. I was like, here's the second-hand knowledge, what I found on the Internet, and here's the first-hand knowledge, what I fucking lived through. Oh, this one doesn't count. Why doesn't this one count? I just said it. I was there. Yeah. But it doesn't matter. It's not what you know. It's what they show on the fucking. Well, that's like yeah. you. You yeah. tell that story of that children's hospital that got bombed, and they said that they hit some high profile yeah. target. And it was, yeah. You know, it's, it's all a lie. You know how I know CNN, BBC, and all these freaking liberal news media. Everybody, even Fox News, they're all, they're all trash, right? Um, you know, they bombed the children's hospital, and they said it was a strategic military object. Killed like 13 kids. That's it. That's the only people that died. That's it. They yeah, the nurses, you know, stuff like that. Right? But, and a lot of times they'll say, well, we had to do that to take out. That was our only opportunity. Right. Well, you know, they, tried, uh, they bombed the Chinese embassy. They killed a like, Chinese ambassador and a couple other people by accident. They thought it was a military object. You know, it's bullshit, dude. NATO and what we do right now is so fucked up. Well, I don't trust any of them. I don't and either. it's not from knowledge. It's just from the null, the null base. It's just like seeing, dude. Like, you just follow the money. Can't you see? You just follow the money. Well, just now it's become more evident as you just like watch from the time that Trump called fake news and started calling everybody <laughs> out. No, for real. Like I didn't, I, I didn't really pay attention. I don't. I mean, and I, then as I, as you watched all that stuff happen, and then now you know what's really brought attention to it is now all the stuff that wasn't is, you know what I mean? Hunter Biden's oh, yeah. laptop. Yeah, all of a sudden, oh, conspiracy oh, theory. Yeah. Yeah. You know what I mean? Believe. And, oh, look, every, other people know. have claimed election fraud other than just Trump, right? But every year, Democrats have done it. Every time a Republican wins. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. You know? He started in 2000 and, uh, with uh, the Bush. You know? Bush yeah. I, I made some of my family mad by saying this. Like, listen, I'd rather have Trump than Biden. 100%. Oh, yeah. Do I trust either one of them? No. I think they're both out for money. and they're, Trump maybe helped our economy a little bit better because he has pride and business he's a businessman he has pride in everything he touches being fruitful mm-hmm. i think you know he took america on as a as a project 
I'm going to leave it better than I found it kind of project because that, that's his mentality because he's an elite. But then he does. He wants to win. He wants to be a winner. So that's why I did it. But he played these Christians like football players in the backs. He never talked about Christianity ever. Now, what his belief is at home, I don't know. But all of a sudden, he starts getting on there and he starts having people put hands on him and praying for him and do all this stuff. It's propaganda on both sides. Yeah, so it's yeah. like, come on, man. If you would have left all that out and just had good morals, I would have trusted him a little more. But when you start doing that extra, that has to be, why does that have to be? Why couldn't we just hear from that from a second source? Yeah, Trump is in the Oval Office. He brought everyone in. They prayed for him and he put his hand on the Bible and they read some scriptures and said, all right, guys, let's have a good day. Why couldn't we hear that from some, why did it have to be? 17 cameras right on yeah, him, yeah. the priest touching him, sprinkling well, holy water on him. Why does everything thing. have to be pre-staged? Exactly. Yeah, it's so it's hard for me to trust in something that's like well, that. And how much you control? And also at the same time, though, how much, question, most of how much control do they have over that stuff? You know what I mean? Like He wanted our vote. Yeah. He knew if he could get the conservative people behind him. would vote for him anyway. Yeah, no, because he was the better of the two options. But but the thing is, I wish he would have left. So. <laughs> I wish he would have left all that out and just been real. When you start doing all that fake stuff, like the locker room talk, he got more people off that to grab her by the pussy thing. Dude, all of us when country he said boys that, were like, yeah, dude, Trump. When he said Woo! that, bro, yeah, when I mean, he said everybody's like, oh my God, I was like, he's a real person. Yeah, exactly. That's he's a real saying. person. That's it. That's the real thing. That's how guys yep, talk. operate. Yep. All That's of how us. guys talk. All, all, yeah. all of us. And if they, of don't, us. if they say they don't, they're lying. Yeah. Every one of us. <laughs> That's yeah. how it works. If they don't say it, they're faking it. Dude, Dude, I get so I think sick this, of fake people. I'm I think like, oh this episode's gonna blow up. <laughs> oh, oh my god, I can't, I can't say that. Oh no, yeah. you know, I've done jobs for people, and you know, I move furniture all the time. Stuff falls out of mattresses and out of closets and stuff, and I don't talk about it. But then they come in there and they try to act a certain way. I'm like, they're like, <laughs> your your dresser's still vibrating, dude. You know what I mean? <laughs> oh yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> Hey, don't lie to me. Yeah. <laughs> you know, oh my like, God. Don't lie. That's crazy. You know, people are so full of crap, man. Just be honest. Like, th that's my biggest deal. I turn a lot of people off because I just. I mean, Realistic, man. Yeah. Hey, did you do that? Being yeah. real, man. I did. <laughs> you know what I mean? I did. No, just being you know, real, you're going to create a lot of enemies. Yeah, I get a lot of hate from just saying off the wall stuff. And I talk. I mean, I'm a talker. I like to talk. I like to be entertained. I like to entertain people. It's fun. But I have to be serious all the way. I'm a guy. I have to treat people with respect. I have listen to what they're telling me so when I'm around people that I'm close with it's fun to just let it out get that two or three weeks worth of just build up off even if it's just vul vulgarity sometimes it's hard just for guys just get, it, get that off you know not with David though oh yeah yeah get with David <laughs> yeah. I still will I haven't listen, I haven't but heard here's the say thing. one swear word since yeah I'm but here's it. the thing though I noticed that and I know that he's trying to do live better yeah so that's you know, that's and you great respect for, it. I and do. you respect it. That's I, what I respect it too. But here's the thing. That's the thing. A lot of people mess up and they'll get. I don't. Know, we talk a lot about Christianity <laughs> in this podcast instead of you know business. But that's that's appalling because I noticed that because I was raised like David, mm -hmm. and I I catch that, and I want you to know that <laughs> I, I see that that you are trying to do better, but you're still here in this conversation with us. You didn't get well, up. Like, well, guys, I gotta go. I don't judge you. you didn't get offended. Listen, exactly. I don't, I don't judge you. That's the whole point. Listen, man. I'm offended. And, and then one day, maybe when I decide to start living better, you know, in that way, I'll, you know, Dave is real. He's sitting there and listening to us talk and do our thing, and, and he didn't say anything bad. He was in the conversation, but not in the conversation. You get what I'm saying? Yeah. Sometimes that's that's more respectful, because I've been with preachers that whatever conversation they're in, they're in the conversation too. Then Sunday comes around, and they're, you know, yeah, all about it. I, I hate hey, fake. Well, let's, you are let's be Monday, real. Whatever you are Sunday, hey, listen, you're there Monday. Listen, though, yeah. let's be real. Okay? I said this at church on Sunday. I'm a human. Yeah. All right? I preach because it's my call. Mm -hmm. Okay? I'm up on the platform and preach because that's what God has called me to do. Okay? But that doesn't mean I'm not a person. Yeah, you never should do with disrespect. Ever. I don't expect yeah. you to be better than me, no. and I don't expect me to be better than you. Because we're all just yeah. trying to do the best that we can do at whatever we're doing, whether it's being bad, whether it's being good. We're all just trying to do the best we can do. So you're going to screw up. You're going to mess up. Guess what? Pick yourself back up and just push through. You can't change your past. No. You can't change what you've done. You can't change what you said. No, you can't take nothing but you back. can take that in the future. And so, like I tell my kids, um, you can never take back what you said. 
no matter what, even if you, it was a joke, yeah. you cannot take back what yeah. you say. So, yeah, I sit here and I listen because I know that whatever I say is there. Even if it's a joke, yeah. I can't take it back. And people, if you offend them, you know it takes 10 compliments to negate one derogatory remark. Yeah. And so if you're angry, if you you can't just spout off at your mouth. Yeah. You can't take back what you say. And it takes, there's a, a Christian song, and he says in there, it always sticks with me, it takes um, a moment to create a memory and a lifetime to forget it. Yeah. And you have to remember that. So as you're talking and I'm listening, I'm listening to what you guys are saying because I'm observing you know, and I chime in, but dude, I'm not your judge, and I'm not your judge. Like we said earlier, like, dude, I got my own problems. Yeah. We got no reason to judge you. Now, if you come to me and you say, what's the Bible say about this? I'm going to tell you. That's my job. Yeah. You know, why shouldn't I cuss? The Bible says profanity leads to more ungodliness. You asked me about that one time, and I told you. That. Now, am I going to tell you quit cussing? That's who you are. If you ever choose you want to stop, great. I'm not you. You're not me. Yeah. I, I love you. It. I love you anyway. I toned it down for a little bit, and I just I didn't feel right, man. That's me. I, I, I didn't feel me. right. Yeah. I brought out of me. Yeah. No, 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 it wasn't you, man. And, it's and, just and I and because we, we have different we have different opinions on We don't cuss at the house. So, so Jared gets a lot of the build up for me having to be you know different at the house. So I mean, I just that's probably one of the only things I've never been able to shake. I just becomes part of your vocabulary and a lot of people they you know misinterpret it for like unintelligent oh well that's the only choice of words that he has well, sometimes it's, actually, it's an expression to get a point across like if you're really upset about something sometimes so you know, science right they actually say that people dr dr fauci's thing yes <laughs> yes him no but they actually did a study on that people that curse are actually more intelligent really that's what they yeah, said on the, on the research man. I'm one of no, the smartest. It's because you're not trying. You're not trying to restrain yourself. Yeah, I've never you're done not. that. Yeah, I've got a bad. So for me, too. for me, like like I said, we're all different people. Yeah. And from my point of view, I don't have to curse to get my point. Across. Yeah. Yeah. But I haven't cursed in years. Yeah. So for me, it's just not my vocabulary. Yeah. I have no reason so to I say think it. You can get your point across just as clearly without cursing. Well, you can. Yeah. But when you get in a, a habit of just. Doing it. it's just a habit. It's like anything else. Well, it's like it's smoke and yeah. chewing, or that's it. Right. Yeah. It's just what you you have to change mm -hmm. your the way you talk. Yep. And what do you do more than you do anything else? Yep. You talk. And the Bible yep. says that the tongue is the most unruly member of your body. Oh, that's for sure. So, to conquer your tongue, if you don't want to cuss, is a hard concept. It is because what you think and what you feel comes See, out of your mouth. But I'm also yeah. a believer of what you think and feel should be expressed. Hundred yeah. percent. Because when if you don't say it, you're living. But there's what different ways you can say it, right? And I'm just saying, yeah, like some there's, people, if you don't say it how you mean it at that point in time, people will misunderstand you. Yeah. And I don't like being misunderstood. Like, if I don't like something, I ain't gonna fucking like that. Yeah, that's you know it. what I mean? Like, and they know sometimes, like, I can have a conversation with you, get the defensive and stuff, but when we get to talking about politics or something like that, it's starting, you start getting angry. So instantly, you just go into that routine of explaining, you know, because you feel like if you express yourself with a curse word, it's more. Because the message, it's it's more more real. there's more yeah. feel, there's yeah. more feeling to it. Yeah, but yeah, it's really not. I mean, you know, Gary, really really not, yeah, Gary yeah. he's like, I can tell you I care about you, but it doesn't have as much meaning than if I say, it, I fucking give a shit about you. Yeah, <laughs> well, most he's like, it just now, means more. They did. Uh, I forget. I think it was. Uh, was it, I don't know if it was Chris Lee or Theo Vaughn, or uh, it might have been um, David Chappelle. They were on one of the, the, the Rogan podcasts. Mm -hmm. They were talking about how comedy has went from telling a joke to going back to the days where Eddie Murphy was wearing the orange suit and every word out of his mouth was the F word. It's getting to where comedy now has to have so much cussing in it. So much vulgarity. Yes, to be funny because yeah. the the way the times are. Well, right in now, comedy now, they comedy have to more. say the F word every other bit. Comedy to anymore. Laugh or well, comedy yeah, anymore yeah. is a Which comedy. It does make it funny. But that's because it's political correct. It's 100%. Yeah. It has to that say that you say you're breaking it. Yep. Mm -hmm. It's funny. That's because funny. they're afraid to say what they're going to say. Mm -hmm. Because they're afraid of the blowback. There's some of them that aren't, and those are the best no. guys. Dude, I, I, I love Dave that. Chappelle, man. Yeah, I love yeah. Dave Chappelle. That dude is awesome. And you know what? I, his deal well, with Caitlyn Off Jenner. the mic, we'll talk a little bit more. <laughs> but Dave Chappelle with some other comedians, like right now, like um, they had some funny stuff on uh, Netflix with 
Snoop Dogg and Cat Williams. Yeah, and, yeah. And all those. And me and my wife actually, like, as I was doing, like, t-shirt designs the other day, like, we were kind of having Just kind of had it on as background. Yeah. And, um, dude, it's, I don't know, something's going on, man. I do it's, that it's like work. It's like the sides are, like, splitting. Yeah. It, you know, and some you start of the to people, see which ones have made deals with yep, people they shouldn't have made deals yep. with, and the other that's ones it, that man. Yep. sides are splitting. That's for sure, man. And yeah. you, you see you them drawn away from each other because they're not supposed to, because the, the, some of these comedians aren't falling in suit with the, the propaganda that yes. they're supposed to be spewing. Yes. So the ones that are tied into the elites and these these uh, conspiracy the yeah. secret groups, they're not. They're saying, hey, if you associate with them, we're pulling the money, we're pulling the fame, we're pulling yep. the spotlight off you. You see them drawn away from those people. Kevin Hart, man, I mean, he's super funny. My wife, she, he's one of her favorite comedians to listen to and movies to watch. But he, he's in some kind of group of people because him and Dwayne Johnson and Rock, Rock yep. all these movies and all these things that they do are all in line with the, the thing that's going on right now. Yep. And you see all these other comedians kind of pulling away from they're it. They're pulling away from it, yeah. And their, their views are going down, their likes are going down. You know, it's it's a crazy time, man. People don't see that, so don't pay attention. They don't pay attention. And, and, and if you say something like that, oh, you're a conspiracy theory. Yeah. Well, you know, it's sad to say I'm a, I'm you just pay attention. Yeah. You just start catching. You're like, maybe it's not full blown conspiracy. Observant. You're just being it's observant. Not, maybe it's not full blown to the point where like you think there's lizard people. No. But like, no, for real. <laughs> but like, you're like, no, the okay. rich people tell you're like, the okay, people that are in the spotlight what to say I get, and what not to say. Well, you know, there's actually actresses and actresses coming out now. Jim yeah. Carrey's a big one. I don't agree with Jim Carrey's mm-hmm. like political beliefs, but he's one that's calling them all out. You know, he goes, Come did, on, you see, did you see the Jimmy, get to the end of it? What's did you this? see the Jimmy Kimmel? What's this? Show? Yeah, that's yeah. what he's talking about. Oh, yeah, 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 I remember that. I remember you know, that. Um, he just had enough. Yeah, and yeah, yeah. yeah, it's almost made him crazy. Yeah, you know, you can just tell like well, his like John Boyd. Demeanor. John Boyd hasn't been in a movie for in the forever because he's a Trump supporter. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so like as you as oh, you're the upper echelon of people are. Well, new. Kanye, Dude, you, you know, watched, you watched a cartoon the other night. Sorry, I'm not trying to cut you off. Uh, it's that uh, the American Tale with the little mouse. It's a yeah, cartoon. Yeah, Bible Goes the, West. Yes, did you see? There's one scene in it, and I didn't even notice it before. It's a, it's an older movie. It's like yeah, late it's 80s, way, early 90s. It's way old. Yeah. Yes, there's skull. Okay, so it, it shoots an American this one Tale. Scene. Yes, yeah. it shoots this one scene. There's skulls around the ground, and this one mouse goes, "We have a plan," and it's all it's about is immigrants. These mice are from this other, other countries. Other country yeah, and they're, they're migrating America. to New York City. And all that's around the bo- base of this one scene is all these skulls and stuff, which is a sign of the Skull and Bone Society, a secret yeah. organization. So then they're, she stands on top of this tower and she goes, We have a plan. And she goes, e, p- e pure una, which means New World Order. Says it clear as day. We have a plan, New World Order. This is in the late 80s, early 90s. So they've already had this plan established. Did you ever read that book by, by And I'm like, they're, Our kids are seeing this. And they're already trying to get it into our minds, my generation, messages. that there will be a new world order, and it's okay because that's what it's going to be. Okay. That's what it's okay. Well, that's like, biblical. It's that's training. biblical stuff. Yep. You know. Training. So on that, I seen it. I, I paused it. I'm like, on that topic, I never. Seen I have it. to say this. As so far as new world, world order, podcast. that <laughs> that's biblical. You know that. Oh, yeah, I know. Right. But so just just to say this though, I never noticed it. Better get right before you get left. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, the Lord's coming back. It's all oh, falling into place. You can see it. So you better get right before you get left. Mm-hmm. Whatever that means for you, you better do it. Cause don't get caught. Well, that's the truth. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah. and there so has to be some kind of there has to be some kind of sacrifice. Or, you know. Oh, there's there's well, craziness. Change. The longer the longer all this stuff is going on, it's just going to be harder to to get back to normal. And it's you know people talk about you know revolutions. They talk about well, the biggest thing he's talking about is one day God will lift His presence. Yeah. It's going to be harder for people like that want to make up their mind where God they won't be as successful because God will lift His anointing off the earth. That's what he's talking about. But will we erase? Yeah, I don't, I don't understand. No, that. So, <laughs> so like it was more to me than it was. Dude, yeah, 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 I'm. I get what he's saying. Well, that's to everybody. I, I've gotten an argument with my grandparents about this too, with the with the Muslim culture. Yeah. You know, you know. So I, I to, this was my biggest you know excuse for talking about it. I'd say, would you go blow yourself up for what you believe? Yeah, yeah. Dude, they believe. Well, it's it. the extreme of their beliefs. Like, exactly. How, how many people? So, if, if you're a Christian, would you a share Jesus? A lot of people Jesus? judge them. A lot of people judge them. I don't. I don't think it's right. Personally, but you admire yeah. their commitment. Yeah, <laughs> that's, that's yeah. just crazy. Yeah. No, it's it's, no, seriously. Yeah. No, no, yeah. seriously on a, on a young kids, there's, level. There's young kids. Yeah. Sad man. Like they, they don't. It says everyone has the opportunity to see the truth. I believe it, but it's hard for me to believe it sometimes because you got these young kids that are seven, eight years old. 
the ball on them. And they you have see no way to walk right though. down the middle and boom. They have no way to count they 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 what they're told. I know, but that's what I'm saying. They believe so, it, though. They believe that when if they do this, that they're going to get all these. Are, can we sit there and say that kid's not going to go to heaven? No. But because we're not God. This is you know a whole different conversation. This, you know what I'm saying? I'm no, saying I, you brought it up. We can talk no. about this off the air. Yeah, <laughs> but, uh, maybe I'm not watching the podcast just about this one time. It's just hard for me to, to judge any religion anymore because it's like, I think if you judge anybody in general, you're putting yourself in the same situation of being, uh, like I said, the Pharisee. Like, well, it says judge not unless you be judged. So you just so got to judge you, yourself. You got to work on you yes. and do what's right. And I, and I feel like if you do that enough, that that'll be kind of like contagious, and then it'll get us spread. Yeah. Let, well, him, people let him be, do the work. People, and you, people are trying to do the work. People want to be like you. The work. Yeah. You when when I mean? you become when you become that type of person, yep. people are drawn to you. Um, yeah. You know, and we talk about this all the time. Yeah, we do. But life is a choice. Yeah. Life is a choice. Whether what religion you believe is a choice. The way you wake up in the morning and what you do with it is a choice. The way you talk to people is a choice. You're in the situation you're in because of choices, right? And people are like, no, you have consequences to your choices. So now choose to do differently, learn from those consequences, good or bad, and do differently. It's a choice. Every day is a choice. Am I going to seize the day or am I going to let the day seize me? You know, what am I going to do? It's a choice. So quit whining, quit complaining. If you can't change it, let it go. Change what you can change. It's a choice. Well, I mean, it's a choice. Yeah, the things you have to accomplish each day are going to be there regardless, and those are good mindset. Yeah. You got to do them anyways. Might as well be happy. Learn to respond rather than react. Don't just get mad. Learn to respond. I've been guilty of that in the past. You just, you you have so much on you already. Somebody does something that sets you off, and you just. Just like every you, you <laughs> for everything, even going through the whole year on that one person. Yeah. And yeah, uh, but and they didn't deserve it. I think. Probably. I think. With, yeah. No. Definitely not. <laughs> I think with age, that, that, that kind of comes with age. The older you it get, does. the more you kind of watch your tongue and what you know how to well, say you know, things. You know the consequences of your actions. The biggest deal is being clever enough to know when to react and when not to react. And that's a that's a big challenge for me too. A lot of times, I'm I'm real quick to be like, oh, well, you don't like that. Well, you know. This is what I think, but I'm starting to learn that what I think isn't as important as I thought it was. The older I get, the more just work on me. Be the best version of my, of me that I can be. Be today. stellar. Yeah, yeah. Be stellar. Be yeah. stellar. I love yeah. that name. Though. That's a good yeah. plug. That's a good plug. Be stellar. Like, <laughs> yeah. no, for real. Like, be, like you know, to say that to end the podcast because it's almost a two-hour one now. <laughs> but like, be stellar. Shoot to be better. Yeah. Aim higher. In Whatever life. you do. Be stellar, regardless if you're an entrepreneur. That's what this was aimed towards. But if you're just a crappy husband, choose to be better. Well, and, and crappy you, wife, and, be and find better. Some, find an outlet if you're if, if you're in a spot where you're really depressed or you're not happy with your life going. Instead of finding a negative outlet, find something positive to do that better. So, you, so you, that is so important to people, find man. a positive outlet to put all your energy into. Because if you start putting your energy into something negative, your life's going to get really shitty really quick. Oh yeah, you got to find something positive to do. Well, it also has a lot to do who you hang out with, who you associate oh, with. Yeah. You are yeah. who you hang out with. If you're around people that are always tearing you down to make themselves feel better, yeah. dude, that's, that's, it's draining. Because you're like, you'll be sitting. Well, you'll like, believe it eventually. Yeah, you start to. You're like, every time you go hang around them, they're just tearing you down. Or they're, they're better. They're supposed to be your friends, you know, like, yeah, look at you, or man, you suck, or man, why can't you do this, or why can't you do that, or why can't you be better? And it's constantly tearing you down. Eventually, you're like, yeah, I do suck, and I can't do anything. Yeah, exactly. It makes you not, and and then you still want to be around the people because you feel like now that you're worth less, so if you hang around them people, that you are more, that you are worth more. You're not, man. You're just, you're just not them. You've got to be around people that are like-minded. You know, when some people are just all focused on materialistic things, which is awesome. I love, like we were talking about earlier, materialistic stuff is great. But if, if you if you are in a spot where, because I've been there, man, I'm not sitting up here and I've, everything's always been great. There's been times, dude, I had negative amounts of money in my account, and it just I could go cry and get drunk or go do whatever. Man. What you probably did? I didn't. Once or twice, you I did. Man, I didn't. Yeah. I, a lot of times, I would I would party on the weekend, but I would go and I'd get I'd work so hard that or go to the gym, dude. Like I know everyone says gym, but you don't see the benefit of a strong mind, strong body. Strong life. I mean, you, you 
But I tell my son this every morning when we go to school. I say, be brave, be strong, be humble. You know, you're going to have crap come up today probably. You're not have, going to like. Don't whine about it, son. Just, I mean, I talk to him like an adult, you know. He's only three. Yeah, but I, I treat him like we're, like, he's not, I mean, we're buddies, but I'm still his dad. But we, but we have conversations like, dude, you ready? Someone's probably going to make you mad, son. Be kind to them. You know, be humble about the situation. I try to explain to him what that means. Be brave, be strong, be humble. Because I had to learn all that stuff later in life. And I feel like if I can pass it on to somebody or my son, like, dude, there's going to be times when you're down and out. If you go find a positive outlet, if you can commit to it for one week, then commit to it for another week. Then commit to it for two weeks. And next thing you know, you have a whole different lifestyle. Opportunities start coming. Be investable because all this all these older generation people, they're looking to invest in people. Maybe not money, but like with opportunities or jobs or or stuff like that. So these el- these older successful people are looking. They they're they're starving for people to invest in right now. So if you can be somebody that's investable, teachable, and teachable, both. If you can find if you can be that person, you, doors will start opening for you. I know you don't maybe people don't seem like it will, but it will. Doors. I mean, I've had I've been down and out, but I just keep trying to show up and keep my word and get the job done and do good quality. And even feel like I wasn't doing good. Next thing you know, this person calls or that person calls or hey, I heard you did this for so and so, and man, you did great there. Next thing you know, you've got four or five different doors that are open. Then you can start being, you know, all that hard work, and we take all that negative stuff, start putting it in positive things over here. Next thing you know, you, you know, you're on track for something, and you, you're out of that rut. But you got to be somebody that somebody can invest in. I guess that's the last thing I wanted to say. Like that's that helps me be somebody that you would invest in. You know what I mean? Like, you know, if you ask me, he's like, hey man, I decided to quit this, you hire him. Yeah, because I know you're a hard worker and I can invest in you. Don't do it, he's got bad knees. (laughs) (laughs) Old man knees. (laughs) Me too, man, it's it's getting there. Uh (laughs) (laughs) All right, anyways, you wanna state the name of the company, bro? Oh, it's just uh, McDougal Flooring. Google yep, flooring. Yep. So if you guys need flooring done, this guy's like we'll the best your in town. Names. We'll put your name and number. Oh, oh, yeah, on, I appreciate on it. Yeah, on the podcast. Yep. Um, appreciate don't forget to be stellar. Work towards being stellar every day. I'm David Wired. Alex Stoich. We'll see you guys next week. Okay.